All right, <clears throat> let's take this this uh, this hoop boy and the Steve Deer off. Let's put my lovely face up here. Hello, I'm up in the corner here. Man, this shirt is like salmon pink, and I look blue on my monitor because uh, the screen is so dark. Um, so it's me and In Filament, the guy who Hello. wrote the Killer Instinct Guide. Uh, he talks on the forums a lot. He gives you guys common sense about changes and stuff like that. We're here to talk about the 3.4 patch should be a good time. You know what? I already feel like our levels of enthusiasm, uh, even though you haven't said anything, are higher than that of the official Microsoft stream in which it sounded like, you know when you pick, like, the teacher picks you to read something in class, right? And then, like, you're just like, well, Shadow Tiger's fear of damage is reduced by 27%. What does that mean? I don't know. Fucking, I don't understand what he said. Doesn't I don't get it. Uh, well, all I know is I am super happy to be here. I really right. want to talk about this patch with a person like you, you know, really in tune with high-level play, lots of enthusiasm, good to go. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to, to let you guys know what we think about this, this patch. Yeah. And sort of just the patching in general, you know, like the process okay. of patching a game like this. You know, it's, it's tough, I think, for IG to release. So here's the thing, right? You got this... You got these guys. They're working under this this Xbox and this PC platform, and right. they have to submit these patches. We're talking like five, six months in advance, or five, six weeks in advance, you know. And when the community has this uproar about something, it's just like, all right. Internally, they're like, okay, we'll take care of this important thing, and then they have to wait five weeks. Yeah, patching is not forgotten. like instant. You know, it's one of those things where it's like you can know a bug exists for forever. And you won't be able to change it for quite a while. Like, we, we'll say, like, oh, Keats, like, this big thing is happening. And he's like, yeah, we submitted that to bug fixing, like, X months ago. And you're just like, oh, well, shit. Like, yeah, exactly. It's just and not only for bugs, but also for balance, right? Like, people find some crazy balance thing or, like, the, the meta is sort of shifting towards one way or another. And they're sort of... They're always sort of a month or two behind just by the nature of how the development cycle works. Yeah, that kind of sucks. And I think it's kind of important to, to take a step back as a community and sort of realize what happens in the development cycle and how that impacts how the game changes. Yeah, I agree. Man, this page they got me on here is so dark. Is there like a brighter version of this I can look at? My, like, this is terrible. I wish my screen was brighter. I mean the patch um, notes on this black background? Yeah, it's tough. Like, what is this? Well, like a green thingamajig in the background? Come on, guys. Yeah. Isn't their colors purple this season? Can you just give me a bright purple background with green font and green. squiggly <laughs> red comic sand? 1990s Geo Cities. I like. Like, I want this system changes to be red comic sands, just boom, wiggling across the stage here. Like, the copy construction, the construction in a word. The construction gifs on the top. You know, people, people getting ready for a new website. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. All right, fuck it. So, uh, as one thing to keep in mind, so any yellow changes were in the last patch. Uh, I know that there was a big issue on the MS stream where they kept reading shit from the last patch and being like, that's going to be awesome when it comes out this patch. And like, oh, yeah, no yeah. one realized some, that. Some of the stuff on the official stream was already out in the game, and I don't think they really realized that. Right. Which is yeah. a bit of a shame. Uh, yeah, I, didn't, I don't think that they really understood that uh, or figured that out. Also, uh, you know, they tried to deliver an interesting stream and tell us what was going on with Killer Instinct, uh, but we all make mistakes. That's cool. Um, <clears throat> as far as everything else goes, uh, let's let's talk just about balance in general real quick. One, there's I know there's a couple things we both wanted to say about this. One thing that I wanted to say is that when people look at balance in a game, they often just look at what their characters got, and they think, like, man, you know, my character this patch only got one thing or two things or whatever, right? Like, my character only got this, and that sucks. Mm -hmm. uh, but what you have to think about in a fighting game, really, like, the strength of your character is important, but you have to compare it to the strengths of others. So if you have a patch where your character doesn't change at all, your character literally gets zero changes, but every one of your character's bad matchups, uh, all the characters who beat your character get worse, your character got better. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so what you have to understand is that you can't look. It's very difficult, even now, if you step back, to look at this patch and try to break it down. It's super tough because you're looking at just your character or even trying to take a step back and look at the entire game. And it's really hard to consider, like, does where the state of the game will go given that, like, you know, all these characters got 
a bunch of changes, including yours, and all your characters' matchups are probably pretty marginally different, you know? Like, they're probably mm-hmm. pretty different. Uh, so it's just one thing to consider um, going into this, that balance is not just your character, but how your character interacts matchup-wise versus all these other characters. And, like, yeah, it's it's interesting to keep in mind. So, yeah. Yeah, even things like, you know, somebody's auto-doubles got reduced by 10%. You know, it sort of feels like... Uh, that's not really that big of a change. How is it going to affect the matchup with my character? But then when you play the game and the character kills you in, you know, it takes like one or two extra openings over the course of a match. Right. That sort of thing like actually adds up over time, you know? Oh, certainly. Yeah. And like, yeah, the thing, right? If your character is a character who is like mid tier but loses to all the strong characters and all the strong characters get nerfed, suddenly that's like a really, really big change. Uh, that's right, like super yeah. great for your character. Uh, so as we like go through this patch, we'll try to talk about what we think, like where the, we think the characters are, uh, and pop, like once the changes are over and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I had a, one or two other things I wanted to quickly bring up. Yeah, go for um, it. I was just gonna ask. Yeah, I think there's a few people in the community who've sort of put all their eggs in one basket on this patch, and they're sort of thinking about it as sort of the savior of the game in a way. Like right. th- this patch better be really good, or I'm I'm out of here. I'm done. So, and I think that that is. Not only is that a little short-sighted, but I think it's also kind of unfair to both the community and to the devs, and also to yourself, really. Because, like, you know, this game has seen lots of really good incremental changes along the way. Like, you look back to Season 2. Season 2 had 14 patches. Jeez. 14 patches. This is the fifth patch in Season 3. Only the fifth patch. And we already have all the characters. So if you're thinking to yourself, how can I compare Season 2 at the end to Season 3 now, we're like nine patches away from where we could be. Right, you know exactly, I mean? yeah. So like, let's, let's let the devs sort of, and at the beginning of season three, was, there was this huge balanced shakeup where all these characters got all these new abilities. Uh, the devs even came out and sort of said, yeah, we don't really know how this is gonna shake out. We just hope that it's a lot of fun for all you guys. You get to f- explore all these fun new tools. And so f- five patches in, it's sort of hard to sort of just assume that everything is going to work out. You know what I mean? Right. Especially given, like you said, 14 patches last season, and there are still lots of issues with balance, right? Like nobody went out of season two and thought like, this is like perfect. Well, right. <laughs> like there are certainly issues. Oh, I mean, people would like to say that, but people would yeah. like to say that. Yeah. Now you look back and people are like, man, season two, the end of season two was the best the game has ever been. I'm so oh, happy. You're crazy. And now it's like, are you serious right now, guy? Yeah. Uh, uh, do I have to go look at, you know, the forums are archived. We can go find some of your posts from a couple months ago. Yeah, dude, it's like, uh, what's his name? Tampa Bison's post about Street Fighter 4 oh, where he dude. called it Scrubby. Oh, that was oh, so good. Man. I love it. He was like, yeah, Street Fighter 5 is so simple. And then he made a post in like 2011 where he's like, Street Fighter 4 is for Scrubs. It's so simple. And it's like, uh. It's like, uh. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think this game is still very early in Season 3. Five patches deep. Uh, and things are still shaking up. They, they've even said, like, a lot of the notes here say stuff like, yeah, we're not sure if this is still 100% where it needs to be. So, you know, that's, this might change in the future. Yeah, um, that's great. Even Keats on Twitter came out earlier today and was like, yeah, do you think your character is too weak or another character is too strong? You know, let us know. Just give us this constructive feedback, and moving forward, we'll continue to tweak it. So, Yeah, it's, it's hard to say where everything's going to shake up. That, given, that being said, uh, you have anything else before we dive into this? No, I think let's let's do this. All right. <clears throat> system change. Changes to the input system. So after crossing under a character, your next motion is read correctly. I assume like, this is for autocorrect. Yes. Yeah. I think what this means is that if you do like slide under your inputs to get correctly reversed, there yeah. might be some weird instances where you kind of cross over and like a back forward move comes out the wrong way. Right, that can happen a lot. Man, you know what the worst is playing Saber Wolf? I always had this happen to me. I try to walk backwards and then walk forward and throw in Season 1 all the time. It got slide. Right, yeah. That was a change that they made earlier in Season 2, and uh, the world rejoiced, you know? Yeah. Everybody loved that change. Uh, yeah, that, that was sounds frustrating. Like it, this might be the cause of that Aria bug that uh, Sea Dragon was talking about. Oh, maybe. Yeah, Sea Dragon mentioned that there's a weird Aria bug right now where your inputs just become reversed. It's probably due to something like this. Which I could see yeah. it becoming weird with her since she has the bodies and everything. I could see it. Yeah, it might just be some weird oversight that happens. Hopefully, it's. Uh, it sounds like if it, if it's a big enough issue, the team will hot fix it. So we hope that happens out. Yeah, because uh, that's pretty whack. I don't even know how the hell that happens. Um, anyway, Jago's changes. 
Shadow Tiger's Fury damage reduced by 27%. That's a nice chunk. That is a huge um, chunk, for sure. Yeah, certainly I think a lot of the people were... You know, Jago, as good as all his tool set is, damage is super high. So this it is... It was really strong. Yeah, he was a really good character. I think that he was one of the best uh, at both the Evo patch and the last patch. I thought he was one of the strongest characters in the game. I think if you asked any pro player, they would say he's for sure in the top three. I don't know too many people who would put him below right. top five. He was just a universally strong character, I think. Yeah, and his damage is still high. Uh, Tiger's Fury under damage reduced by 10%. Um, and they say basically... We feel that he opens people up better than ever in Season 3, so he hits a bit too hard. Uh, and I agree, right? Charge Fireball is not something he had before. Charge Fireball is not something Super he had before. Good. People, He also has Flip Out, but I think Flip-out's people good. are over overestimating his Flip Out a bit. I think it's it's a good option, but it's not it's not as scary as other characters. Yeah, it's, it's certainly up there. Uh, but, you know, he especially had some pretty silly stuff with uh, just, like, cashing out one-chance combos, like one-chance juggles. Yeah. Uh, which is absurd. He also builds so much meter that his shadow cash out doing that much damage is it sucks. Yeah, that's another that's big lot. thing to say, right? Like he gets meter more than any other character in the game. So for him to have one of the highest damage shadow cash outs sort of yeah. means he gets access to that more often than maybe he should. It's kind of synergy that you don't want to happen. It's one like thing I do want to say about this shadow uh, tiger's fury thing is yeah. that when Jago gets a lockout or he gets a counter breaker, one of the he has this really awesome combo that's just heavy, medium, light, auto double, so around the world. Right. Into, you know, you can keep doing that as long as your lockout leads. And then you just do shadow uppercut because it is the best use of meter. It does the most damage and it builds instinct. Right. Yeah. So by this damage, it actually changes his counter breaker and lockout combos in a really interesting way, I think. What it does is it means you have to use shadow laser sword, which is a very high damaging linker, and you have to forego the. All around the, the world. Uh, auto doubles for instinct build to get the same damage that you did in the previous patch. So to get the same kind of damage as last time, he has to not build instinct. Exactly. So he would do like say, uh, heavy auto double, medium auto double, then shadow laser sword, and okay. then that would fill his lockout time. It does the same damage as the old way, but now it doesn't have the instinct build. So it's so he can this, do the like, same damage as before in a lockout. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Okay, my, when I was doing the counterbreaker damage for my guide, I found two combos that were the same, but the instinct one is obviously better. Okay, that's so interesting. That other change is probably uh, is probably unaffected by these patch notes. So I think his damage is still really high. It's just that he doesn't get the whole world now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he doesn't get instinct and do all that damage. It's just absurd. Um, right. Exactly. Next change is that Shadow Wing Kicks no longer throw Invincible. I saw a lot of people say that they felt like this change was like nothing. They're like, that's such a stupid change. Uh, I think it's pretty important because there's a lot of times where you try to throw Jago and he just gets away with doing this move. And mm-hmm. like, this move just does everything. <laughs> like, yeah, it before does it was throw- not throwing Vulnerable, this move really did do everything. It was so good. Super duper fast. Um, and unless you had Shadow Meter, you can't punish it, right? So... Right, it's actually a plus. Plus, it's better yeah. than a This is like a super strong thing. So shadow wing kick not being thrown, throw invulnerable is not a huge nerf, but definitely one that I don't see issue with. Like, right? I mean, because if you think someone's gonna uh, throw you on your wake up, you just uppercut them or backdash, which they wrote down in the patch notes. Yeah. yeah, if you if you instinct pop and you see someone command throwing, you can just backdash and then use shadow wind kick again. So right, yeah. So you don't have to just you don't just go right into shadow wind kick, but you get the same thing. The one thing I, where I think it actually might make a difference is in the Conrad match because Conrad will put you in, uh, he'll be doing swarms and sometimes he'll throw a command grab yeah. and Shadow and Kick beats both of those. So now it won't. That's and interesting. I think, he'll just have to commit to uppercut instead. Well, if it's at far range, then uppercut won't hit, right? Uh, yeah, so, if he spaces it out. Like I'm thinking like, yeah, you're probably right, right? Like uh, if he cancels like roundhouse into it or something. Right. So he's got this sort of, but I think Conrad or Jago did pretty well against Conrad, so that might be sort of an interesting tweak to the matchup. Yeah, but in sense. terms of thinking about where this nerf actually applies, I can't really think of too many places. That's sort of the only one. Yeah, that's probably the only matchup-specific thing I can think of. But I think, like, yeah, I think Jago players will just uppercut, or they will backdash, and then it's, like, not a problem. Yeah, so. and then bug fix, where second and Okuken would sometimes not be destroyed by projectile destruct- destroying move. Uh, I mean, all right. Yeah, good, good fix. But, I mean, overall, I think Jago's relatively the same, to be honest. Uh, I think, I think some other yeah. really strong characters got nerfed this patch. 
And I think Jago kind of like, I think all the strong characters were like on this like tier and they're all going to like drop a little bit. So it's not that the strong characters will no longer be the, the better characters in the game, more that just the other characters are a bit closer. Right. Yeah, exactly. I think Jago was still incredibly strong in this match. Yeah, he's definitely his, one of the neutral is unchanged. Like you, you can right. do all his old neutral stuff still. Yeah, so so losing neutral to this character won't change. A lot of people think just look at patch notes and they think, yeah, Jago got nerfed. My character will beat him now. But you're not looking at like what was changed, uh, which really. I mean, his cash outs much. hurt a little less, and yeah. sometimes you can't throw him. He'll or probably have to hit you one more time. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. Which, Jago's good at hitting you. Yeah, Jago is very good at opening people up. He has amazing neutral, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, next character. Man, we talked for like 10 minutes on one character and gave more information than the whole Microsoft stream today. You know, it's almost like we played the video game and seen it before. Uh, instead of just being like, oh shit, they want us to talk about this thing? Uh, all right. But, you know, whatever. It's yeah. all good. Uh, all, all right. right. Saber Wolf. Shadow Eclipse damage increased by 10%. Uh, it's a nice little chunk. It's not a huge amount of damage, but certainly useful since he can juggle after it. Right, he can juggle after it. It, it makes his reversal a little more potent. It makes his right. cash outs a little better. Um, yeah, I think it's not a biggest change, but it just means he'll have to hit you eight times instead of nine. And that sort of that makes a big deal in the long term, you know? Uh, yeah, definitely a sort of interesting... Uh, change to him. I mean, it was one of those things where it was part of the, one of the moves nerfed at the start of the season because, you know, you could juggle after it. It was. It was nerfed 35%. I have yeah, the other so, parts. So they, throw some, uh, they threw some extra damage on there so they call it even. And uh, that's sort of like their, their way to do it. He has generally been a lower damage character than before, right? Like, So you have to think, back in Season 1, his damage was good, but not like super absurd. Season 2, his damage was super high, and everybody was like, what the hell? This is crazy. Yeah, his damage was high, and but really only in Instinct. His neutral right. damage hasn't changed that much. Yeah, I was just going to say, but really, it hasn't been that different. Instinct damage was absurd last season. So, right. Uh, I think this is sort of a happy of... balance. Where he's at right now, I think, is, is better, because um, he's a character that can hit you really easily. And, like, right. people will... will underestimate how strong moving around with dive kick is or just general mobility with this character uh, and also underestimate his footsies and his ability to stay plus and force offense like mix-ups throw mix-ups or whatever right um, yeah. if you have really strong neutral it's it's still this character is really effective he's really good at being a, a wall and it's really good he's just really good still I think yeah I think I mean I think the character is some of the best neutral in the game like yeah. overpower might be like a top three normal in the game Certainly, overpower is pretty silly. Uh, second change, flip out on crouching light kick launches the enemy a little higher, delaying their landing a bit, so you get better mix-up opportunity. But uh, if you're a wolf player right now, the juggles will feel, it'll feel a bit different. So like if you dash through and do and have a media timing, you'll probably have to adjust it. But overall, it's buff to wolf. Um, just you're gonna have to change your timing a bit, so you have extra time to mix people up. Maybe I wonder what the likelihood of getting two dash throughs is now. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think I think they probably wanted this flip out to be a little bit more potent than it actually ended up being. So right. they're just like, yeah, we need to make sure that this this the damage sacrifice that we're giving up on Shadow Eclipse so that you can flip out is worth it. Yeah, I think you're probably right, right? So th those two changes have a lot more synergy than I think people are talking about. Uh, Shadow Eclipse damage going up and one of the things you're going to juggle into a lot of the times being more potent. Uh, definitely mm -hmm. makes landing shadow eclipse scarier in general. I think people will just look at these two changes and think like, oh, well, you know, Sayer Wolf can't mix you up, right? Like, character has no mix-ups. Because people say these these are words that people say out loud. They're not true. Heard those words, yes. They're not true words, but people will say them out loud. Uh, but I think it definitely makes a lot more mix-ups more potent. Like, why dash through, neutral jump, whiff dive kick to the other side now. It's probably a more viable mix-up than before. For um, sure, yeah. Because you have a little extra time there. Like a lot of people don't think about this, uh, think about the synergy of Shadow Eclipse getting more damage and flip out. But yeah, he, this character is so good at mixing you up, and these things just help him do so. And also makes it so that if you have an anti air or get a, a good reversal, then you're in there. Um, yeah, exactly. Last change I didn't really hear talked about too much in the stream. When Hamstreak hit, hits or is blocked, Sayerwolf would be invulnerable to throws for 11 frames while sliding past you to avoid some really nasty bugs in which he could be thrown or ar by armored opponents while he was under them, causing the animations to severely break. Um, this isn't like a change that's like going to dramatically affect you, really. 
in a lot of situations. Yeah, it's just sort of one of those weird interactions I think they had to solve by doing this weird throw invincible state. Right. But if you don't play an armored character, you will have never noticed this happen. So. Yeah, you'll, it, it's it's really probably like an Agnos thing. I think it's probably yeah, Agnos almost, and Glacius or something. Yeah, thing. Glacius and Instinct. So that's just like, yeah, just a bug fix. Nothing and else. you'll see this change on a couple of the slides uh, in the game. But that's about it for Saber Wolf, yeah? I think so. Yeah, people are, I know a lot of Saber Wolf players are really upset that they didn't get the help that they think they needed. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what they wanted. Uh, like a projectile or something? A cannon? I don't a know. cannon, yeah, a dragon cannon of some sort. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I think the character is still underselled. I think his footsies are just really strong, and if you don't play him expecting seventy percent every time you get touched, then he's still pretty good. I think. I yeah, and also you know people talk about guest breaking a lot, and I think this is one of the better characters for resetting people. Mm -hmm. um, they also talk about one of the complaints that I hear a lot of times is you know, you can guest break him easily. Or break his combos easily because you know he, his kick linkers are the same animation, right? So hamstring and the overhead have like only two animations. So when you see the only overhead, two, yeah. you know it's like all right, it's either medium or heavy break. And if you see the slide, it's like all right, light or, or heavy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but no one ever uses ragged edge linker, which has all three strengths. <laughs> So yeah, it's like just, it's a regular linker. Can lots of characters with... have one linker or two, but he really has three separate animations. For linkers right so i i'm not sure what the the problem is there given that he has multiple linker types that you can use uh, you know lots of characters only have two different looking linkers he has three and he has a perfectly usable one also if you're worried about guest breaking probably the best character in the game one of the best characters in the game for resetting mid combo mm -hmm. like Absolutely, he is yeah. so incredibly good at it um and people use it for a reason uh, especially in instinct. So yeah, really, really a strong character. I don't know why people think he's so weak, but I definitely think he has some great matchups against important characters. So, yeah. Yeah. And one other thing I wanted to mention quickly is that people were saying his damage is bad. I think Cyberwolf is actually one of the best characters in the game for lockout confirms. Yeah. He has uh he has the heavy auto double. You know, yeah. You just rap rapid fire rap that bitch. And also, um, what's it called? Uh, shadow leaping slash is the fastest shadow move in the game with the most damage. So you can do, like, if you see a lockout even at, like, 80 kV, you can do heavy, heavy shadow, and you're not going to break out your your combo. Yeah. And it does a ton of damage. So if you are looking to confirm lockouts and not always do one chance, I think Saber Wolf actually gets more damage than other characters. So uh, in important. a lot of situations, right, yeah. I, I agree. Uh, and he, he used that meter really well, right? Because, you know, you have to think, a lot of people talk about getting in with this character and stuff, but... Like, his mobility is so good for getting in that you often, I don't think, need to spend meter. Like, people will be like, man, it's so tough to get in. Like, I need to use my shadow meter on, you know, Leaping Slash to get through projectiles. It's like, you have Season 3's heavy run into running Slash. Yeah. Which is incredibly fast and beats, like, anything but block in a lot of situations. Or if someone, like, uppercuts it. Like, that, that move is insanely quick and, will like, is just absurd. Like, you can whiff punish with that so easily. Yeah, and low profiles, some random things, you know? Right, yeah, and it's just the hitbox is still super big. Uh, it's super hard to get out of the way of. It's really good, so. Yep, that's Saber Wolf. That is Saber Wolf. Let's move Glacius. on. Guess... This is a really interesting change. I never would have guessed that this would be a change that would be Yeah, made me neither. I was thinking in my head what I would do to Glacius, and this never came up in my head. So Puddle Punches are all different now. Light Puddle Punch is now vulnerable from frame 0 to 3 on startup, but still starts a grounded combo. One thing to note is if you don't have perfect meaties here, this can still be used as a wake up and hit you. Right. So it's only frame 0 to 3. Uh, so people will still do this because it's really fast, and you have to have perfect meaties or you'll still get dunked for it. Uh, medium Puddle Punch now causes a soft knockdown instead of starting a grounded combo, but is invincible. And Heavy Puddle Punch has three additional frames of invulnerability, so it's it's harder for this thing to get stuffed now, uh, making it vulnerable until after the first active frame. So one of the things about Heavy Puddle Punch before, right, was that it would trade with a lot of things or lose. Uh, that's not the case anymore. Light Puddle Punch was a really fast reversal that started a grounded combo. That was super strong. It was very good, yeah. Um, um, so that's one of... thing that's, that's now gone. Uh, and I think that that... It makes a lot of sense because, you know, a character like Jago, he doesn't get to do uppercut 
and then continue a combo out of it. He doesn't just go up there and be like, yep, now I'm doing air auto doubles or something crazy, right? Like, yeah, it's it's not like he can confirm it. And Glacia's damage is very high, so him getting a combo out of it was super good in a lot of scenarios. Yeah, and heavy DP, which is the fully invincible one now, has does as much damage as Jago's DP. Yeah, it does a grip. So we're talking like 19% or 15% or whatever it is. And on counter hit, we're talking huge because it's only one hit. Right. So this is like a really potent move. And if you cancel into Shadow Hail, it's actually a true block string, which I didn't know earlier. I thought it was. I thought they all had gaps, but the heavy one doesn't. Uh, wasn't there was a gap before though? Yeah, I, it probably depends on the range. Yeah, I'm not too sure about earlier in like season two or something, but I'm. I know for sure that in season three, heavy puddle punch into Shadow Hail is a block string. Interesting. Uh, okay. So what this means is you get a, a safe reversal if you block it, and you all have right. meter. I feel like it will, It depends on range, whether that's true or it, not. It might. It might depend on range at the tip, but if you like blocking it like, really close. Like, yeah, I feel like that. It depends on the character height, too, I think, because how tall your character is determines how early the hail hits you. Uh, there should be a gap against a lot of smaller characters. Possibly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is a really interesting change for Glacius. Um, I think it makes it a lot easier for characters to who like have to you know, like you have to think his matchups were that are good are characters that struggle to get in, and once they get in, like he, the threat of puddle punch makes it so that he just jumps away with wake up right, right, or like does something to get through. So yeah, it's really frustrating. Uh, also, the only other change he had was a bug fix fix that caused the opponent to flash as they were attempting to break a, break a shadow linker during opener shadow hail. That was just re- there's a lot of really weird stuff going on with Shadow Hail a lot of times, where like yeah, it's, it's like breakable but not counter breakable, and like you can auto break it or you like try to break it and you won't get the breaker but you get one, and yeah, yeah, and I think it probably comes from the fact that it's a projectile and most yeah. projectiles are not broken, so it's sort of maybe this weird exception that's doing weird things to the rules. Yeah, uh, this is interesting because I feel like this is a small nerf to Glacius. Um, maybe it's not a huge nerf. It's maybe like a just a okay size nerf, right? But you have to think, right, that um, a lot of the stronger characters that were tough for him got worse. Exactly. Yeah, so I, think, I think as a Glacius player, this is probably a better patch than you for you than the previous patch. Right. Uh, I'm with you on that one. Yeah, because a lot, you know, a lot of these strong characters got changed. They lost some things, and so you're probably doing all right now. This patch is probably pretty good for you. Yeah, and I think this is, I mean, losing the, the combo starter on light DP is kind of a that bummer. Sucks. But yeah, that sucks. I mean, being able to dump people for 15% every time they move is pretty good, too. So It also means that Ant's here, Heavy Puddle Punch, is going to be much better and do a lot of damage. Yeah, exactly. I wonder There's how much no... damage now Down Fierce into Heavy Puddle Punch as an Ant's here does. Ugh, yeah. It's got to be I a mean, nice with, chunk, right? With Jago, it's like 18 19%, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's a similar number for him. Dang, that's a nice that's a nice amount of damage. You get to call hail after too. Oof. You get to call hail. Don't jump out of zoner, right? I don't know. Seems yeah. pretty good to me. Seems pretty good. All right, Thunder. This is a big one. Light Samamish yeah. no longer has full body and vulnerability, but all Samamish follow ups are once again available from this move. Right. So before light uppercut, fully invincible, but he couldn't do anything after. So he just had a mirrorless uh invincible. Or right, uh reversal. This is super good on Thunder. And this made approaching this character on knockdown so frustrating because he would just do anything. It's like, I'm yep. either going to do light uppercut, wake up shadow command throw, wake up, you know, backdash, wake up button, wake up ankle slicer. And it's or just he like, could do wake up medium or heavy and get out of the corner. Right. right. He could do like the follow up. Yeah. It's so you're not bl- invincible, but you're not going to always punish. So. Right. So it, it was frustrating. Uh, it was really tough to cover this character on wake up. And I think uh, probably a bit too strong, uh, which is why they changed it. I think it, it was really good. It was for I, sure really good. Not only was it good on his wake up, but I've had this conversation with some other people, but I think it really enhanced his neutral too because he doesn't have to spend the meter on reversals. Yeah. So he always has shadow command grab. He yeah, always has point. shadow DP for cash outs. And you're just like, you can never move against this character. You can't punish his wake up. You can't, you can't fight him in neutral. And every time he hits you, he does 50%. So yeah. Ten percent damage reduction on regular uppercut, shadow uppercut, and skyfall, uh, which probably makes sense because he was dunking people <laughs> with these, these <laughs> yeah. damn juggle combos. They look hilarious, but uh, yeah, he's doing these these extended ridiculous juggles for just obscene damage. And uh, yeah, the drop kick damage is fifteen uh, percent higher now to compensate because 
Uh, a lot of people are ending their combos with dropkick, and I think that's cool. And I think them giving extra damage on that to make up for Skyfall not being as cool as much is a good change. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, you know, all these like combos that are like uppercut, button, uppercut, stomp, or uh, like shadow after, and then like you just do another stomp, and then you go for something else, and it's like if you get locked out on any of that, like you're just done, though. You get locked out on any of that, you're you're taking fifty percent, and then he still flips you out at the end. Right, and you have to. So you're just like you're never out of it. And he has that meter because he doesn't have to wake up with it. You're exactly. You're right. I think that's that's why the late Simon Meese change is really important for this character. It Last makes him change. way less nutty. Call a sky buff now lasts ten seconds instead of eight. That's a nice little utility change. Uh, I think call a sky in general is better this season, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, for sure. Call a sky is quite a bit better this season because you can cancel dash or stomp. So. Make some unsafe mix-ups safe. Uh, I think Thunder probably is about exactly where he was before this patch, like in the same area. Mm -hmm. I think he was good before this patch, and these changes um, are de they're definitely nerfs for him, right? But uh, I think a lot of the, the other really good characters got nerfed, and so their zoning is a bit worse. Like Characters like Gargos are not as strong zoners, right? They have some weaknesses to their runaway. So, like, I, I think Thunder, this patch, is probably going to maybe dip a little, but not too much. He's still going to be a pretty good character. Uh, especially yeah, since, you know, there's been damage nerfs to characters like Fulgore and Jago. And he lost some at Season 3, but he still has very high damage. So, I think he'll still be pretty good. Yeah, I'm not too worried about Thunder's position. I think he'll be firmly in the top 10 discussion for the rest of the season. So Yeah, which is good. I, I think this character is good in that, in that position. Yeah, I'm with you there. Um, Sadira. Man, this character got some crazy stuff. That I would never have expected them now. to give. Yeah, she's completely different now. Uh, let's just get into it. Heavy Widow's Bite now causes a, a hard knockdown during juggles. I think this is really cool because before it was kind of frustrating that she could just do it and you'd stand up. And right. it's just like, it felt really weird. So this makes sense, especially given that it's pretty easy to break. So Yeah, it's breakable now. That didn't used to be the case. So yeah. now you sort of need a reason to use it. It being a hard knockdown makes sense. Jumping light kick, standing light kick are now flip outs. And standing light kick can be jump canceled on hit. Mm -hmm. This is buff. This is pretty good for sure. This is super buff. Like air juggles from Sadira were the main complaint about them before, right? Is that like, oh yeah, they don't lead to that much. They don't do that much damage. Well, now you have options. Like you have your, you know, flip outs in the air. You have heavy widow's bite for uh, hard knockdown. If you can, you see that like, all right, they guess broke, expecting I flip them out. Now I can continue this juggle, cash it out, or if I don't have meter, you end in heavy widow's bite and you get a knockdown. Uh, or right. you just confirm, like, all right, they are locked out. I get a free f light kick flip out now. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's also jump cancel if you do standing light kick on the ground. So that is really good. Um, that is something really interesting. I think even stuff, like, in your combo, do, like, manual standing light kick and jump cancel it. Yeah, I, I think that's great. It's sort of Saber Wolf-esque to me, you know, where you can just reset into dash. It's sort of yeah. you, say, you reset into jump cancel, and you're on the other side, like, in a hurry. Yeah, it's it's certainly an interesting one. Um, they also gave her some extra, you know, hitboxes and active frames to make her juggles a bit better. Uh, makes sense for this character, right? Widow's Drop now causes a ground bounce against airborne opponents. Oh, my God. That's so <laughs> sick. Uh, it's a really interesting use, use for this move, right? Because before people were using the pogo and juggles, but not the Widow's Bite. Mm -hmm. so I think that this is a really sick change like having the ability to do Pogo and Widow's Bite or uh, Widow's Drop in a combo now plus you have Heavy Widow Bite plus you have the Flip Out it opens up a lot of new juggle opportunities which I think this character always had cool juggle opportunities but now definitely better than before yeah not only better be than before but also quite a bit harder to break which I think is really important yeah in this game harder to break juggles are certainly strong uh, and a character like Sadir should probably have them since her damage is not super high anyway Speaking of right. which, combo tree, auto launcher, plus forward and heavy kick during any auto double to automatically perform the leg launcher and transition into juggle. This is sick. It's really helpful for her ground game, I think. This is so good. Yeah. This is so good. Because now she's like a mix-up machine. You never know in the combo when she's just going to switch to juggling suddenly. Which and is like, I think how this character should be, Right. Right. And if you're so focused on trying to break this forward heavy kick, which I think can be done on reaction, but it will really prevent you from breaking linkers, I think. 
I think you're right. Yeah, you, you'll always just be sort of thinking about like when is you, this coming? Like auto coming? double will come, and then you'll be like, all right, now I'm waiting. Where's the forward heavy kick? And then she does like medium linker. Yeah, she does medium linker into cash out, and you're like, well. Oh, and you're like, all right, well, there it is, right? You're like waiting for that, or maybe she does like you know auto double delayed linker, and you think, oh, that must be the forward heavy kick, and you try to break, and it's like, nope, delayed linker. Now I'm gonna lock, like get lock out and do a bunch of damage. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like that sucks. Um. Again, increase height on crouching heavy kick attack hitbox so she can get a better juggle off of it. Yeah, I noticed a lot of people having issues trying to sweep at the end of their Sidereal juggles. Uh, fix bug that would cause Shadow Wiz Bite to be breakable as an opener unexpectedly. Fix the bug that allows Sidereal to summon an instinct mode projectile while in a flip out reaction. That sounds funky. That was really funky. People were getting flipped out and they were summoning a web and people couldn't get in. So, Sidereal, uh, definitely improved this patch a bunch. I think so for sure. Uh, if you were to ask Sadira players what they wanted before this patch, I think a lot of them would have just said damage. Right. They would have just been like, give me more damage on my cash outs and give me more damage on my instinct. And I don't think, I mean, some of them were like, why can't we do flip outs and like stuff the other season three characters can do? But right. I'm not sure they would have come up with this extensive list, you know? So I think it's pretty interesting to think about. They have a lot of new tech to come up with. Uh, yeah, I think the characters certainly certainly giving damage is like a big like yeah, like this is great because you just have more damage. But this is a much more creative solution to coming up with how the character can be cooler. This is a very right. Iron Galaxy approach, right? Like instead of giving damage, they're like, what kind of cool tools that are super fun can we give Sadira? Yeah, and I think Sadira was always sort of the quote unquote fun character from season one. She right. was this like juggle, like let's show off the engine type character. And when Cinder and other characters from Season 2 came in, they sort of stole the thunder away a little bit. Oh, definitely, and, yeah. And now I think she is like, when you look at this list, it's like, wow. She's a lab character for sure. Oh, definitely. Lots of fun. Uh, I can't wait to see what she comes up with. Orchid. Fix the bug that allowed Orchid to summon an instinct mode projectile on a flip out. Fix the bug preventing Orchid from starting combos if she whiffed the first two hit of her Rekkas and then only the second hit of the two hit overhead connected or caused the counter. Bug fixes. So nothing for her except bug fixes. I guess that means they think she is quite strong. I think she's in a good spot too. Uh, I don't yeah. know if I would give her anything or take anything away. I also think that she'll get a bit better this as you know the, the strong characters get worse. Yeah, I think that's, an, again, we keep saying that, but I think it's really important to keep in mind every time you see a character that doesn't get a ton of changes. Like uh, yeah. their place in the meta is actually quite quite different this patch maybe. Yeah, especially, I mean, you know, a lot of these strong characters have really powerful neutral that's tough to deal with. And exactly, Orchid is a character yeah. that excels in neutral. So when these strong characters have their neutral fixed, suddenly, like, you know, it's very different. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm with you. I think Orchid is actually quite strong. She's not, she wasn't in the top five discussion for me last patch, but I think she is a very viable tournament character. Right. And I think she's hanging around the top. Like, she'll always be there this, this season. I think you're right. Uh, spinal. Uh, this is interesting. Changes. Jumping, dive kick. Now has six frames less landing recovery and now deals five less frames of block stun. Uh, so dive kick is one frame better than it was on block, but spinal can move better than before. I'm really curious to see how this dive kick looks just when you whiff it to get around. Right. Because six less frames of landing recovery is a, good, is a nice little chunk. It, yeah, it's quite a bit for sure. I know that... Uh... It's yeah. This is all spinal got. It's just the improved movement in neutral, right? Um, and a couple of bug fixes. But we're talking. I know some people were sort of thinking spinal might not be all that strong in this season three, uh -huh. especially last patch. What do you think about that? I don't think he was a, he was super strong last patch. Uh, I don't think he was a character that was super strong or super super powerful last patch. I think like the people who are doing well with him are just really good. Um, but again, I kind of think similarly that this patch, like, uh, you know, this character could be a lot better because of the nerfs to other characters, like the, the characters mm -hmm. that can just kind of dunk him on wake up and be overly powerful. But I am, even if spinal was to get anything else, I don't know what I would want to give him. Uh, it's really tough yeah. for me to figure out what I would want to give him without him being season two spinal where he's just like so strong. That's sort of where I'm at too. Yeah. I think. He's, he's tough to sort of pin down. Like, if you look at it from the dev's point of view, like, think about how Spinal placed at Evo. He got second place, <laughs> right? right? And he got, uh, Raven as well got ninth with Spinal. So we have our two best Spinal players basically getting top eight or really close. Right, doing super well. Because that, I mean, I, we, we talk about how not be that strong, but the tournament 
we don't show it. It's hard it's to say, of, right? It's kind of a weird spot. It's like almost you don't want to just look at the tournament results, but at the same time, it's like the character is consistently done well. And and like I think most of the credit there goes to base, but I think the character certainly works. Um, yeah, base, also work hard though. Super strong player for sure, and we shouldn't discount that at all. It's just no, it's I think it's like ninety nine percent him, <laughs> as is the case usually. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think Spinal maybe could have used something, but I'm not sure what, to be honest. So I'll take it uh, for so now. I'm really curious what the dive kick looks like. Yeah, the dive kick change and the, the changes to the other characters might help him. And if not, there's I think there's always uh, room for in future patches to maybe tweak him a bit more. Yeah, he could use some more. Fulgore. Uh, got, a, got a couple of nerfs that I think make total sense. Mm -hmm. Cyber uppercut no longer autocorrects when you pip cancel from doing a special move. This is especially common when you did... Uh, dash you did cyber dash you would just go flying forward and then they jump over you and then you pip cancel the other side uppercut uh makes a lot of sense i don't think he should really have that instant autocorrect capability there's now yeah. a minimum height restriction on shadow air lasers when canceling into them yeah you could do them really early before and you would come down and be plus uh or safe even if you still screwed it up kind of so yeah that yeah. was uh definitely a bit strong increased reactor spin speed penalty by 33 percent when performing teleports so doing full screen teleport over and over slows your reactor down a bit more 33 percent you know it's really funny this is such a ki player thing to do i thought it was the funniest thing ever when they're watching the stream they were like yeah uh i'm watching the stream right now and it doesn't look 33 percent slower to me it looks the same and i was like really yeah, that's, you just that's don't trust them lie. yeah they're just they're wrong. lying to us yeah they just lied to you they didn't change anything they're like yeah we want full gore to be the best like what kind of fucking crazy people do you must you be maybe there's a bug and it's not supposedly doing that but you just think your eyes are so good you're like my eyesight's good that's only 31 percent slower i fucking yeah. knew it keats you son of a bitch like i'll have your firstborn child for this like fucking what do you what happened i don't know you guys are crazy i couldn't believe the shit i was reading in the chat it's like yeah uh that doesn't look 33 percent slower to me so uh yep needs to be nerfed Call Keats immediately. I was like, uh, you guys are crazy people, and I don't know what you're thinking, but all right. Whatever you fucking say, you lunatics. Uh, ground <laughs> Shadow Ivy pushes the opponents away slightly farther, and is now plus 25 on hit, allowing full gore to link in a heavy blade dash or heavy eye beam from long distance. I also imagine uh, this is an interesting change for me. You could do Shadow Dash after two, Blade Dash. I always you could always do shadow blade dash. After, yeah, you yeah. could always do shadow blade dash. Uh, but now heavy blade dash, which is 50-50 break, whether you know you counter break or not. And heavy eye beam is the safe. Like I could do heavy eye beam here, and they won't break it. But I could also pip cancel it into a fireball, teleport, and combo off of that. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty interesting little buff. I think uh, you'll see some cool combos where people do like shadow eye beam, uh, heavy laser, fireball, teleport, cancel, and combo off of it. That's pretty cool. Costs a lot of meter, but uh, costs a lot of meter. Really cool. But yeah, for for combo video stuff and even just like random utility and like a surprise match in a tournament, I think it's good. Yeah. Uh, fix the bug preventing Fulgore from canceling heavy eye laser into Devastation Beam. Yeah, dude. I've been trying to do that, Keats, all right? I was looking at it and I was like, look, this is only 33% of the Devastation Beam. Uh, I don't know what's going on here, you fucking crazy people. No, I've actually been trying to do that and sometimes it won't work. So that's good. I'm happy that that's happening. Uh, Fulgore is still really strong. I think that his changes, his nerfs are much smaller than I think a lot of the other strong characters. I feel like, so in the last patch, I feel like he dipped a bit more than the other top characters. Uh, right, with those and in this patch, laser changes. I feel like they're dipping a bit more. So they're a bit more even from where they were before. Um, but his neutral is basically unchanged. He's still so unchanged. strong. It's very similar to Jago, right? Where it's like his yeah. neutral is basically the same. It's just little tweaks here and there to make him better. Uh, or to make them worse. So, yeah, I think I think Fulgore got some good stuff. I saw people like, why the hell would they give Fulgore this plus 25 laser? Why would they buff him? That's just an absurd buff. And I'm like, are you actually looking at what the buff is? It's not even that big, right? It's what like, we need to do is read the patch notes yeah. before we talk about Yeah. No, yeah it, his damage job. is the same. Like, other characters got damage nerfs. He didn't get any damage nerfs. Right. So he will sort of keep his same level of strength that way. And I think... Like, I don't think the teleport change really hurts him all that much. I think he's just super strong still. I'm telling you, it's only 31% slower. Only 31%, my mistake. Yeah, fucking we need to get Keats, Keats on that. you sag of shit. TJ Combo. They mentioned that this is going to be a fix before the patch came out. Um, fix the bug where raw opener of shoots, uh, causing the raw slash opener version of shoots Haas to deal the greatly reduced damage of the in combo version of the move. So it was doing like 3% when it was supposedly supposed to be doing 12%, which is a fucking chunk. 
That is a chunk. That is twelve percent is a lot of damage. That is super buff for TJ combo. Raise the damage on the in combo version of shoot toss also by ten percent. Uh, fix the bug that could cause last breath to not trigger if TJ was hit out on an armored move. Yeah, that that kind of sucks. Uh, yeah, that they happened. Mentioned that it happened. Tournament. In the tournament. That's, That's a bummer. Um, but yeah, TJ was missing a counter hit window on the startup of many of his special moves, so you couldn't counter hit him. Whatever. It, it'll you'll see it now, but it's fine. Uh, that's an interesting little bug. But yeah, so I think um, a great a great patch for TJ Combo since he's got much higher damage now on Rock Command Throw, uh, and all these other characters that are really really strong are nerfed. So you have the fact that TJ only got better this patch mixed in with uh a lot of characters getting nerfed and i think this is the patch where tj combo should shine like i think, I think people are really figuring out his offense uh now and really figuring out his new tar combos and like tj combo will shine this patch i think this is the patch where people are going to be like yes let me show you how fucking sick this character is yeah i'm with you tj's tj's damage on stuff like stagger and to roll and to throw is so strong yeah and it's going up <laughs> And it's going up, like even just like normal throw. Like if you try and tech this throw out of your stagger state, and you yeah. get locked out because he presses a medium button, you're eating like sixty. Dude, I really want to play me some TJ combo. Like I had never played him this season really until recently, and I was doing the like I was doing like strong fear step, and then I was like, oh, I can just hit confirm this. Oh, okay, let me just hit confirm this real quick. Yeah, it's really yeah, strong. It's like super I think sick. I've always been an advocate for TJ. I think he's been really underrepresented by the community. Yeah, and I'm really glad to see that. There are some people still sticking with him. Uh, you got Devil May Care doing some good things with him. Also, yeah. coincidentally, I watched a set with him uh, on Basis Channel, and he didn't use Last Breath one time, and I'm so happy. Yeah, dude, the instinct is so good. I think people are slowly realizing, like, yeah, this instinct is so powerful. Like, it makes so many things from this character so strong. It's it's like I think it's like a top three or five instinct in the game. It's you just so gotta pop good. it. People are so scared to pop it, but it's often the better choice. You pop it with frame advantage in the face. You make a mix up, mix up safe, and you're like, you're right there. You to just do, do command throw and then recover before they land. Yeah. <laughs> like, all you right, well, command, fucking... <laughs> you do twelve percent command throw and then anti air them when they jump. Like, what do you That's want? Third strike Makoto, dude. It's not not a big deal. <laughs> uh, Maya, dagger yeah. assault enter now leaves Maya plus two instead of zero. We still feel this move has a lot of uh, untapped potential. So hopefully this change encourages players in the wild to try this a bit more. I don't think it will because I don't think it's that great. <laughs> just gonna be honest. I don't believe it, but we'll see. Uh, it's an interesting little change. Previously, when throwing daggers, they had a much larger attack box for the first two frames. Uh, that is fixed because there was a weird issue where it was hitting funky up close. Uh, just a slight bug fix, basically. But Yeah, it's a bug fix. It won't change it much. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this dagger assault change. I really don't think dagger assault is the hotness. Yeah, it's weird, right? I don't know. I think I, I saw a Facebook post where Pink Diamond was like, actually, if you have instinct on... You can do one chance into dagger assault, and then if you do it at level one, the daggers return to you as soon as your mix-up's over, so you could just keep looping it. That sounds good. But you're at plus two each time, so it's kind of like a, a plus frame mix-up repeatedly. I don't know. That, might that be, could be good. Uh, I think overall, I think like it has to exist because the old ender was way too good. But Yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, this ender doesn't feel as powerful as it could be, but... You know, it is what it is. I feel like almost I'd rather have them have an ender where Maya gets to pick pips. You know, like uh, Gargos will just do a combo and then he can do his damage ender and pick what he wants to do. Right. I feel like I almost wish Maya got to pick, like, all right, I get a pip for this dagger or a pip for this dagger or something. Like maybe hmm. power it up or something. I don't know. Anything but what this is because losing pips and daggers at the same time sucks. Yeah, you're right. Uh, if the mix-up doesn't go your way and you don't have instinct on, your daggers are gone. So. Yeah, it sucks to suck. Uh, I don't know. I think that she... I mean, she only got a buff this patch and didn't get worse, so that's certainly a good position to be in. But even, like, without this dagger assault, where do you feel Maya is this patch? I think she's good, not great. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think she's not a weak character, but she's not, like, a character you'd put in top five. Uh, sort of hanging around, like, sort of mid-tier, upper mid-tier sort of range. Yeah, like she has her uses, but she's not amazing. She's definitely got some pretty pretty good nerfs this, this season, like the shadow uppercut no longer being able to throw stuff after and just her uppercuts in general. So, like, I don't know. I, I don't think she's amazing. I don't think she's bad. Um, certainly, I like the balance of Maya this season much better than last season where it was just this really degenerate style where she was like, yeah, I'm going to stack up this thingamajig and then do this thingamajig and, like, cash you out for a billion damage, and nobody liked that. Right, uh, but yeah, Conrad. Yeah, 
Let's get going. Medium and heavy clutch have expanded range and are active for one frame longer. Mostly to help with Gargos. Because, yeah, that fool was way the hell up there. And you would be like, ha, and then miss. And, like, that sucks. That is the worst thing, right? When Gargos is jumping up in the air and you're like, all right, uppercut. And he just floats over you. And then his yeah, minion hits you. And you're just like, he's Ugh. just gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> it just gets me triggered. Anyway. <laughs> Shadow, uh, Shadow Swarm, when performed from neutral, lasts three seconds longer than before. It's nine seconds instead of six. Uh, they they mention that they think it's because most people use that use it in um, Shadow Swarm. Uh, they don't use it as much because they're using Shadow Spike, so they're trying right. to make it a bit more viable. <laughs> Uh, and then they right. nerf Shadow Sandpit to no longer build meter back for Conroth. Since it is a shadow move, they feel like, you know, generally shadow moves don't build back shadow. Yeah, I think that's fair. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Fix the bug allowing players to juggle in a shadow world after holding back during a clutch. That sounds funky. Yeah, they basically don't want people to ever combo after a command grab without having sand on the ground. Right. That's the idea. It's, you should have sand out and pre position this and be good. Yeah. So every time people find weird glitches that make that happen, then they're just like, nah. Stop it. But yeah, I think Conra, I mean, he's in such a weird position, you know? It's really hard for them to know what to do with this character. They gave him, I think, in Season 2, Shadow Swarm was so good. Oh, man, it's absurd. And, and then they replaced it with Shadow Spike, which is now also so good. And yeah. they can't sort of find this balance where Conra has multiple uses for his meter. It's always just one thing. And I think this change might go a bit more towards people finding out stuff with they need the to extra make three it seconds. <clears throat> so that if you have both out at the same time, his shadow sand thingy shoots scarabs at your opponent or something <laughs> crazy. Like they need to combine oh, the both of them so people use both of them. That would be sick. That would <laughs> be. I don't, how, I don't know who would be happy about that. I would play fucking Conroy and do that all day. You might, if, yeah. you, if you have shadow scarab out, uh, and or if you have shadow spike out, and then. You do Shadow Swarm, then it just picks up your swarm and starts shooting it out. You know, it's hey, like the, the it's thing a, that comes out. Like, yeah. And it shoots scarabs at your opponent. Jeez. Oh, man, that would be sick. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Conroe's all right. He's not super strong. He's not super weak. Uh, I think people are slowly starting to figure out how to play him this season, but still, it's kind of hard. Uh, yeah, he's also the type of character that I don't think should be a top five character. He's just too frustrating. Yeah, his his archetype is not good to be super strong. There are some characters where like you don't want that character to be one of the best characters yeah. in the game just because of their design. For sure. Because uh, it's super frustrating. Like if Gargos is like the best character in the game, no one's happy. That right. sucks. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty. Well, Keats, Keats might be happy, but no one else. Yeah, just just Keats because he likes that character. Ripter <laughs> made back plus HP flame chain combo juggle a bit more reliably. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, sure. Whatever. We'll see. Move the manual cancel window up one frame on both medium linkers to allow crouching medium attacks to manual in these situations. That's cool. More manual options and easier manual options are always cool. Uh, fix the bug causing jumping light kick to be breakable as a medium. I've never seen that, but that sucks. Yeah, always a weird situation. Yeah, that seems like that's, that's happened quite a few times in this season and in season two as well. They had like weird strengths attached to the wrong moves. Yeah, I think there's some other stuff going on in this patch. But basically, Ripped are about the same. Uh, that's cool. Not getting nerfed this patch is a good. Yeah, I think he's actually really in a good spot she. right now. She. Sorry. I'm not I'm not a lore king here. I'm good at this. I'm a commentator. You are, right? yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I think uh, not getting nerfed in this patch is a big deal. It feels good, man. It feels good, man. Because all these strong characters getting nerfed and Ripped are... Staying about the same. That's always a good feeling because you think, right. right? Like a lot of these characters, like you're getting hit by Jago, you're not feeling it as much. You know, like Arbiter's not jumping around, being able to shoot you as much. Like there's all these like things, like all these characters are getting dunked, and you're just kind of like hanging out, like yeah, this is good. This is a good feeling. So if you were happy with Ripter last patch, or maybe you felt she was a little weak, like now your character is better. Yeah, absolutely. By association, not because there's buffs, but because every other character that is a problem is nerfed. And one other thing I wanted to say about this manual cancel window, just quick, it's yeah, uh, it's just basically like I think all characters should have. If you try, try to do a medium manual after a medium linker, you should have more than one frame. Yeah, it should be a couple I, of frames. I think it's a bummer if your character is just like yeah, my Man, my best trying to manual best omen shit is so hard. <laughs> yeah, dude, no, tell me about it. If if your if your normal speeds are such that you can you can allow this extra leniency on the links, I think you should just do it. I think I wish the KI team would go through and do that for every character. Basically. Yeah, that would be that would feel, that would feel better. Uh, so I'm, but I, I want to say I am really happy that they did it for Riptor. I think it was 
it shows that they care about this sort of thing. So that's right on. Yeah. Omen, fix an issue that can prevent some auto doubles from moving closer. This is uh, in the last patch, right? Uh, yeah. I was going to say, throw now has a manual cancel window on frame 54 that has eight more frames recovering it, leaving it plus three down from plus 11. So there is basically before you would throw in the corner and you could just do a special move as a linker. Yeah, exactly. You and could you do just had any to strength guess. of linker or lightning legs. Yeah, and you could you could not reaction break it. You had to guess, basically. And it was very frustrating. So instead now you can still do your old manuals with light, medium, heavy, whatever. But yeah. no longer can you just do a strength of shadow kick or the kicks. Uh, they call it flurry. Is that what it is? Or slide. Sure. And you'd have yeah. to guess. Like that That sucks. So yeah, they fixed it. And they mentioned that other characters have similar situations like Glacius. You know, he could throw you and then do something and you just have to guess kind of. But, right. Uh, they said they'll think about it, but they'll see if it's maybe too strong or not. But yeah, I mean, again, another patch where Omen, he's really just kind of hanging out. So this this character, this patch, I think it was much stronger. I think Omen is in the running for top three. Like, yeah. I think he's really, really strong this Because he was definitely great before this patch. And now you have, like, really no change. Uh, and you have, like, all these other characters getting nerfed. And, like, Omen's like, yeah, I'll fucking take it. That sounds legit. <laughs> yeah, he's he's in there, man. He's doing all the same stuff he used to do with the same effectiveness. And all these other characters are just struggling to, to sort of stay up at their old strength level. And Omen's just like, yeah, I'm chilling. Yeah, chilling. Like, he is good this season. He is good. Agonost. This is fucking crazy. I never expected these changes for Agonost. Like, I was like, what is this? I'm like looking at the changes. I'm like, oh. I had <laughs> yeah, no what, idea. What is Stompwalk? What is that movie? Even? I knew I what Stompwalk was. I was just like, I couldn't believe that of all things to change. This is the one. It's an interesting one. This is what IG gets me. I'm like, man, what are they going to do to Agonost? Like, maybe change this. Maybe change They're like, let's fucking change Stompwalk. And yeah, we'll make it 33% faster. <laughs> and someone's going to be like, well, it looks only 27% faster. Only 27% faster. Fucking whatever. Stompwalk now crushes Lil's until the first active frame. It's a low crush. Also, first hit is minus 3 on block instead of minus 10 at zero chunks. That's a, that's nice. Minus 3 on block, that's real good. That is nice. That Second is really nice. and third hits on block are also minus 3 on block instead of minus five at zero chunks uh now this move is definitely real strong it is very it's strong. a low crush safe on block move still shadow counterable uh, still shadow which, counterable and if you block the first hit you just press like a standing jab to like check him right but yeah if he wants to like get around your pesky low pokes this is a really serious option yeah a character who has a really powerful sweep that goes far that you know beats his armor this is a great way to deal with that Mm -hmm. uh interesting change i'm pretty happy about it but uh i think it's something i never would have fucking thought to do <laughs> well i think a lot of agonos players were like when would we ever use this move it's terrible why would we like what's the point of this move why does it even exist and i think now it has a reason to exist and i think that's really cool yes people get a chance to like use new moves in their play style and that's just always fun um bug fixes on the other spots standing heavy kick not to uh, work correctly and continue sliding forward if spinal absorbed his ruin or shadow ruin that sounds really funny like he just kept going forward or what yeah he just like pushed spinal across the stage that's hilarious then you just punish him and then do teleport linker and then you use in the corner yeah exactly Sick. <laughs> that sounds great uh so yeah agonos i think uh another character who's better off this patch since all these other characters got nerfed and he got a buff uh definitely and happy it's... happy fun times for agonos I think so, and I think he's the type of character, like we were saying about Conrad, you can't make him too good or it's frustrating. I oh, think he's man. that archetype for I sure. I think he's dangerously close. And he, he, I think you're right, he's dangerously close. So if you were thinking, like, oh, how are they going to buff Agonos this patch? This is sort of, like, the, the least they could do without yes. pushing it over the ledge. You don't want him to be too strong, because a too strong Agonos character is very frustrating. Uh, Hisako fixed a bug that could cause follow-ups to Onryo Zon be unbreakable if the first hit of Onryo Zon whiffed, and that's it. That is the only change for Hisako. I think she's in a great spot. I don't think she really needs to be changed. I'm with you there. So I'm happy with this. All these characters that are like getting just bug fixes are like very marginal changes. I think IG's made the great call so far on all of them. Yeah, I'm happy that Hisako didn't get any big buffs or anything. I feel like she's in a good spot. Uh, so I'm real happy with where they have her right now. Yeah, um, I'm with you there. Cinder. Uh, some interesting ones. I wasn't expecting much Cinder changes. I thought he was about in a spot where he should be. He's pretty pretty strong character, but... 
uh, pretty where he needed to be. But there's some fun buffs and nerfs in here. Manually detonated power bombs can now hit opponents OTG when they are laying on their backs, launching them into the air. So they basically did this because sometimes you miss bombs and they end up just stuck to the floor. So you can now yeah. OTG with them. They're stuck this to is the floor and they do you no good. Particularly good if you have someone in the corner and you're throwing bombs at them. And like the bombs right. are just stuck to the floor in the corner, and you do like a throw, you can just OTG with them, even if the bombs aren't stuck to them. Right. And it's important to know that when you do an ender with Cinder, all the bombs explode. So you can't like stick someone with a bomb and then just do an ender and then OTG them off the ground. Right. That you would have be to, like, crazy, have one, man. Bass would have, have, have some dumb there. shit, wouldn't he? Oh, he sure would. He'd, he'd have a combo video tomorrow with all these crazy and stuff. And he'd be like, this is the most broken thing on the planet. <laughs> it would be so dumb. Uh, yeah, it's that's a really interesting change. I don't. This change is fun, but I don't think it's actually, like, it's not going to make him a whole lot better. Yeah, it's I think it's very a, situational. Yeah, but I like it. I like that sort of fun, oddball stuff. It comes up in matches, and you're like, man, that's so sick. Yeah, you're not going to see this that often, but when you see it, you're going to be like, this motherfucker knows how to play some Cinder. Exactly. Uh, reduced damage on opener shadow fission by 45%. And it is only opener shadow fission, it says. Yes. So but just doing shadow is... fission in the middle of your combos will still be awesome. Right. And this this is... I'm, I'm sad that it's 45%, but I also understand why it's 45%. This thing was crazy. Did you see the damage on this? Move? It was absurd. You could do like like 40% one chance off of this. Yeah, if you it do really fierce, just... fierce, light target combo and cancel yes. into Shadow Fission, it's like 25% unbreakable and then one chance into 46 or something. Yeah, it was absurd. It's it was like... way too much damage. I saw a lot of people doing this by the end of the patch. Like It took a while for people to get on it, but it's very strong. Uh, they yeah. also reduced the the chip damage on it to be 10 less points of chip, which is instead of it being 11% chip, 8% chip. Still super good move. Still really good. I'm also, I was telling Keats, I was sad about this because <laughs> I yeah. really love the high chip because I think it's really cool use of meter, but 8% obviously still very worth doing, so it's no problem. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, Shadow Fission, only less damage uh, as an opener, so that's pretty good. I'm happy with it. Uh, I think this is a good change to Cinder. Yeah, he's. I, I'm with you when you, when you say he was sort of right about where he should be. I think he's another yeah. character that's really sitting in the right spot. And I'm glad that these changes are not really strong one way or the other. Yeah, good changes. Arya, mm -hmm. uh, really not a tons of cha changes for her. It's just that you can break the grenades on her heavy kick, you know, standing heavy kick, crouching heavy kick, etc. Uh, and also that they launch a bit higher so you can get some better juggles. Um, that's yeah, about it. They're just trying to make sure that she is not, if she wants to do Vortex, that you have a chance to get out. I think Arya might be one of the strongest, if not the strongest character in the game now. I think because you might be right. she really did not get a huge change, uh, a huge amount of changes this patch, uh, whereas the other really strong characters did, and she's super buff. Although she has the bug right now where her inputs are reversed. Yeah, but that's you know shame, you don't really but... count that as whatever, no. right? Like that's. I mean, bugs happen. It's that's it's why. a shame that it happens, but they happen. Yeah, that would get fixed. But uh, you know, just Arya super duper strong in this patch. Like this is a huge, huge change for her this this whole patch because all these other characters you know got nerfed and she's just like that's it chilling yeah she's just yeah she's doing all the same stuff she used to do with the same effectiveness it's very 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 good uh this is a sick sick patch for aria players you should be very happy your character get, did not get any nerfs um the main thing though i want to say about aria is that i think when she's good it's actually a really fun game I'm, yeah i I'm think happy. she's an archetype that I, that's good in the game we mentioned that some characters are not fun when they're the strongest Right. But I think Arya being strong is cool because she's very, very hard to play. Uh, she's hard to play. She always forces these really interesting situations on both the opponent and on right. her that you don't get with other characters. So I think it makes for a more interesting spectator game as well. Right. Uh, I think Jago being a really good character is great. Fulgor being a really good character is good. These are char like characters where it's like, if they're a bad character, it sucks. Like You right. don't want those to be weak characters. It should be yeah. characters, archetypes that are not super frustrating uh, and you know not super overbearing when strong. And you can fight. Like Conrad being the best. Eh. Arbiter sure. being the guess, best. Eh. Eh. <laughs> not fun. Shadow Jago being the best. Also not fun. Shadow, Shadow Jago. Jago being the best. Also not fun. You're right. Just tons of bug fixes. Yeah. Uh, basically no real balance changes. Yeah. No real balance changes to speak of. And I think that's totally okay for him. I think he's also a character that I would classify as being in a pretty good spot. Uh, I don't think he is too strong 
or too weak. I think he's probably just hanging out just where he needs to be. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I think he's the type of character when the game first comes out, people just get hit by all this really stupid stuff. Yeah. But as the game gets more advanced, he will not get away with that as much. And then the real dirty stuff will start to come out because he has some real dirt to find. Right, and you have to hit, you have to hit that kind of you know, dirt with this character eventually. And when you do, it's like, this is going to be good. Right. And if they were to buff him now or something like that, that dirt is going to come out later. And then it's just like, well, now we have goes. this crazy character. So, uh, Kim yeah. Wu, she got everything. She um, got the world. Let's talk about this. Yeah. Uh, fix an issue that caused some enders to drop and after certain manuals or doubles, right? Just the bug fix with that. She had that stupid thing in the corner. Shadow yep. Firecracker now steps forward like Heavy Firecracker to make her shadow counter a bit better. Um, that's cool. The main yeah, wanna... need of this. We'll, we'll talk about that after. Let's keep going. If you have at least one dragon before landing a counter, you can now dragon cancel out to start a combo. So you have to have one dragon ready. Yeah. Parry something, and then you can dash cancel into a combo. Uh, and the dragon, good. the parry still builds you your dragon back, so it's like a right. So you, it's like a net zero gain. Net zero on, gain. Yeah. On it, but you get to start a combo. Uh, this is very good. This is definitely a really strong, strong change for Kimu. This is really strong. Mm-hmm. Something that she definitely. Uh, is going to use a lot and be really good. Uh, especially in those situations where, like, you know, it's instinct and you see something you can parry, you parry it, you get to free, uh, you get a free combo off of it instead of before we just parried and nothing happened. Uh, right. and that kind of sucked. Um, but interestingly, when you've got, like, one dragon, like, first, it, it really magnifies the value of one dragon. Yes. You always want to have one dragon so you can do this. If you don't have any, it's kind of... Like, the difference between zero and, like, one is just... You massive. definitely want to hang on to a dragon always now, it feels like, right? Yeah. Like, you always want to have this parry and a combo available. So, spending dragons on random dragon kick to get in, uh, probably not going to be a good idea. I don't even think it's that great of an idea in the first place, but even less now. Yeah, um, and, yeah, you've got all these people just flying around the stage, spending dragons kind of... Really nearly, right? Thinking. And now it's like, yeah, now maybe you do want to hang on to these and use them in other ways. So, I like that it's sort of... Your dragons aren't as expendable. Which is good. Right, uh, you gain a dragon on frame two of a successful counter instead of frame one, so it is possible, though rare, to be hit out of this before you gain a dragon. Uh, this is to allow the dragon cancels from dragon yeah. counter combos. So, yeah, some people will be mad about that, but you oh, got man. counter into combo, so get over. We are it. gonna we're gonna see some serious rants on stream about somebody not getting a dragon. Yeah, I can already hear the high pitched whining and face. Yeah, I, I don't know who you're talking about, but I think it's gonna happen. He knows who I'm fucking talking about. Firecracker Ender's resources granted have changed. Level one, you get one dragon, which is how it always was before, right? All three, all four levels all, of this, you just gained one all dragon. All four levels did exactly Which that. felt a bit weird. It um, felt weird, and I can see why they wouldn't want to give like two, three dragons for the higher no, levels. No, that would be so strong. But this change is pretty cool. It's sort of like a hodgepodge of stuff. You just get to like have fun with all your stuff. It's great. I don't know how they came up with this. Level two, gain one dragon and some shadow meter. Level three, gain one dragon, shadow meter, health. Level four, gain one dragon, shadow meter, health, and instinct. This is and, buff. And I saw oh, the, I, the, the amount of health that she got. It wasn't yeah. very much. I'd say it's about like 4% or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's not a ton. Yeah, so they're not uh, talking like Jago levels here. We're just talking a small bit. Right. It's not a huge amount, but this is big. The one thing you have to keep in mind, though, is that her cash out and damage is very strong uh so you give up a lot of that to get stuff back Mm -hmm. so there there is sort of this like oh yeah well she can just gain health or shadow meter all the time now right but she's also giving up damage because this ender doesn't really do much it does like yeah basically nothing does like no damage so it's an interesting idea right where you get to sacrifice uh you know your damage for health and meter and instincts and stuff it's an interesting choice and it also synergizes well with the dragon cancel or the dragon counter thing yes. where she can start parry because now it's sort of like if this change didn't exist, she, what, how she would be played was the first hit she's just going to do one chance into a dragon Yeah. because it, obviously having the one dragon is so valuable for the parry. But now if, if you get locked out or you're like, maybe I can extend it a little bit longer, you get extra benefits. Yeah, you so get more from it. So dragon ender is much better because having a dragon is great. And now there's more, you know, there's more off the ender as well. Yeah, it's definitely more of this, like, non-cut and dry situation that I really like in KI. Yeah. So many characters have this, like, should I do this? Should I do like that? deciding which ender to use or deciding how you should do your combo or what the situation is going to be. So this actually really changes the degeneracy of her of her early play, and I like that. So it's yeah. cool. Uh, new command normal, dragon sweep, which is down forward and kick. You can cancel this. 
uh, out of any situation where you can cancel into a special move, which is really good, I think. Uh, yeah. You move forward and sweep. It's minus five, which isn't that bad. Uh, it's not that and it bad. It's on four, frame 14, which means you're not reacting to it. No, it's uh, like a medium scythe from Nash if it was a low. Yeah, this is good. This is a good thing for her to have. This makes her low out threats a bit better. Right, she's not getting a ton off of a knockdown. It's not like she's going to vortex you into some crazy stuff. But it makes her pressure a bit scarier, especially when she doesn't have dragons. So she can kind of condition you like, all right, I'm going to do a low. All right, I'm going to do a low. All right, I'm going to do a low. And in your head, you're like, yeah, I'll just eat the low, right? Because, you know, it doesn't lead to a whole combo like her overhead would. But there right. comes a certain point where you're just like, all right, I'll fucking block low. And then you get hit by the overhead. So this is definitely great for her mix-up game. They made it so her crouching medium kick is now minus one instead of minus two. Crouching heavy kicks minus two instead of minus four. And uh, they fixed the bug with the weird super flash. But really, uh, everything else is the bigger changes for her. Yeah. Good patch. Great patch for Kim Wu. Great patch for Kim. I think she was always underrated. Um, yeah, I think never, so too. never quite like in this discussion for top. But I think <laughs> certain people might have made people negatively think about Kim when she didn't really deserve it. Um, yeah, I just think, I, I still don't think she's going to be a top three or four or five character with these patches, but I think she'll be a lot more fun to play. Yeah, I think so too. Tusk, man, he got a lot. Stagger Ender no longer allows you to continue up with stuff. It just gives you 100 KV. Uh, super happy about this. Yeah, I think the entire community is happy. Even I Tusk. was one of the biggest complainers about stagger ender into normal into stagger ender into normal into stagger ender into normal i think that that was the most degenerate boring thing i had ever seen i hated commentating it i hated watching it uh i can't yeah. imagine what it was like to get hit by it over and over and over and over uh i rarely did but when i did i was angry i don't i didn't like it at all i thought that was like the stupidest thing it just felt so gross it felt really bad and it felt stupid so yeah, i'm really happy it's gone he doesn't need it. He's really good without it, I think. Right. He's fine without it. Uh, but they gave him a bunch of buffs to no, they, compensate. They did. They gave him some really nice ones. Um, so Shadow Immortal Step now triggers a Shadow Front Step that's projectile invincible. Uh, pressing any button during the start of this step portion of the move will trigger the Shadow Shoulder. So what you do is Shadow Step, and you go through the projectile, and then you hit another button, and then the, the part that will actually hit your opponent comes out. Yeah, and that part is also immune to projectiles. Is right. Right. So you're, like, covered the whole way, basically. Yeah, you're good. Uh, Shadow Shoulder, they also mentioned, is immune to projectiles. Uh, so better for him to get in now, right? He's a little easier for him to get past some of these projectiles. Uh, Shadow Air Skull Splitter now fires an additional explosion, and all explosions are spaced farther from each other, covering more of the screen. This is also to help him get in. Air Skull Splitter now spawns explosions on whiff or block when landing. These explosions can destroy incoming projectiles and make this move a bit safer on block than before. Uh, number of explosions is based on strength, so you know the heavier strength, more explosions. Air skull splitter no longer causes a ground bounce, and now will stagger grounded opponents. Uh, air people just get hit, so yeah. Nothing yeah, they're really trying to make use of this move because it was like I never saw it used ever. Nobody would use it because it's just not that good before. Yeah, you can now cancel the landing of air skull splitter into shadow moves on hit whiff or block. Uh, you can also use it. They, they mentioned, you know, try canceling in a shadow step to approach behind a wave of projectiles outside of instinct mode. So they're saying, like, you come down with shadow, and that pops up a bunch of sparks, and then you shadow in behind it. So now, like, you're in there. Yep. Uh, very interesting. And then they fix the bug at the end with jumping medium punch. But really interesting, they really are trying to focus on Tusk getting in better than before. Uh, stagger under nerf is really big. I think, And a lot of people are like, man... Tusk got, you know, he got all these buffs. He didn't deserve these. He's going to be so, like, crazy. And it's like, well, yeah, well, now when he hits you, you can't do the stagger under thing. Right. So I think it's a lot easier to deal with. But definitely a lot of buffs for Tusk. He's going to be much stronger this patch. I think he'll be quite a bit stronger. I think he's quite a bit better when he's when he was at that really helpless position of, like, full screen against the zoner. Right. But I don't think he's, like, really all that much stronger when he's close. He still is doing going to do all the same things. All his buttons are just as good as they used to be. It's just this, like, he's a new character when he's trying to approach, but I don't think he's that different when he's close. I'm reading the chat. I'm reading this Maximilian dude fellow. Hello, welcome to the chat. Um, you know, he said, I think Nikki is really strong because he breaks everything on frame one. I actually think Nikki's really strong because he plays good neutral. 
and has great mix-ups and is really good at maximizing wall splat scenarios. But yeah, he has good breaks. I always hear people say that he breaks like really well and consistently, but man, people never give that guy credit about how good his neutral is. It's crazy, right? Yeah, I was watching KI Grand Finals at Evo this year with uh, with a friend of mine who's just picking up KI, and he said, man, this Nikki guy, imagine if he played ST, you'd never be able to jump at him ever. Right, his reactions are insane. He's, like, so good at consistently dealing with the crazy neutral in KI. Like, you know, KI neutral is so crazy, you can never control it, but then you have Nikki, like, who's like, yeah. He's just, like, in control the whole time. Yeah, it's really impressive. Uh, it's insane. I don't know how he does it. His neutral is very, 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 very good. Uh, Max, yeah, I saw you mention in the chat. Like, I don't know if you saw the full war combo he mentioned. But, like, I didn't forward, see it. No. Forward, fierce, shadow, laser. And then you uh-huh. do heavy beam, heavy fireball, heavy beam, heavy fireball, teleport, button, ender. And it's like 45% one chance. Okay. But it costs him like his whole meter. Yeah, it costs him basically two bars, right? That's mm-hmm. pretty interesting. That's a cool little combo, though, for sure. Um, Neat. I definitely want to see that. That sounds like it could be really sick. That also sounds like you could do some cool resets off of it and get even more damage, probably. Um, yeah, exactly. The the ender level will still be high, so you do a reset, and you're like in there for huge damage. That sounds sick. I can't wait to see how that looks in a match. Uh, that's a lot of resources to spend on it, but if you're an instinct, why not, right? Like, you have a fucking hell of a meter. Yeah, makes sense to me. Sounds good. Rash changes. I think this is one that makes me sad as a rash player, but needed to yeah. happen. The VFX trails you, yeah. on Dig Bad Boot opener have changed to help the opponent see which strength is being used. Fuck! I can't do boot, 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 boot in the corner anymore. Well, oh. you can't. You just have to get a lockout first, and then you get to do the, the five boots. This sucks. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, that's a great change. A lot of things like that needed to be fixed. So, uh, yeah, it happened cool. to some other characters this patch, too. I think they're just they're just trying to make sure that doesn't get away from the monk. Uh, they made his crouching medium kick and heavy kick a bit worse on block. Makes sense. His sweep was minus one. It went like half screen before. Now it's minus four. Still like one of the best Wait, sweeps in the game. Still minus good. four. What are you going to do about minus four? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's so weird. And then some some weird instinct fixes. They made it so you know he could f- summon a projectile on flip out reaction, just like uh, Orchid and Sidira had the same thing. So yeah. Yeah, some weird stuff. Uh, but Arbiter or uh, Rash about the same. I think definitely potential top five character this patch. Yeah, I'm with you there. I always thought Rash was really strong. I thought I he was probably top five last patch. Like, he was real close. Now I think that character is fucking strong. He's so good. <laughs> I think it's yeah. absurdly good. His footsies are insane. Like, I, you just in neutral, I just stand there. And, like, someone hits something. I'm like, okay, standing medium kick with punish, boot, run cancel, juggle, 30%. Or forty percent with one cash out, and like you can't see any part of it. It's like, yep, all right, well that was sick. Uh, yep. Character is fucking strong. So he's yeah, good I think everywhere Rash is on really the good. screen too. He's good runaway. He's good up close. He's good. He's just yeah. There's no real spot on the screen except being knocked down in the corner that he doesn't like. Yeah, he's super good. Um, super happy about that. Arbiter, man, he got a lot of changes. Uh, Overshield recharge minus eleven on block was minus one. We never intended for this to be unpunishable on block, and it ended up feeling like a bug or oversight to us. Consider it corrected. The move acts the same as the way it was before. Also, a lot of people in the chat I saw were like, yeah, you never intended it to be unpunishable? Well, fuck you. I don't believe you. <laughs> Iron Galaxy, they called you out. Hold that. There's no way you could be telling the truth. There's no way. I mean, this game with all these crazy characters and everything going on and these crazy designs, no way you guys missed something. You guys are fucking scrubs, and I hate you, and I hope your families die. Uh, it's basically the gist of what I got from the stream chat, so there you go. Uh, again, fucking reading the stream chat's hilarious. Yeah, it's minus 11, so it's punishable now. Uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you just can't wake up. This character's supposed to be pressured, Yeah, and that's just the, how the way it goes. Uh, that's cool. The window yep. to fire, a second and third shot after a jumping carbine has been reduced from 22 frames to 5 frames, which means you can't do super delay- delayed gun anymore. You can't do, like, jump, gun, wait, gun, and then, like, confirm yep. and do stuff like that. You have to just fire rapid fire, which means you have to use more bullets than before uh, and guess whether it's going to hit or not instead of just confirming, which is super strong. Uh, yep. So, yeah, I definitely means that jump gun is not as degenerate and strong as it was before. Cool. Gun damage raised by 10%. Uh, they lowered it because the jump gun loop was so good, and now it can buff it back because of that. That was one thing that I was always hoping. I was like, make jump gun not as strong, and the rest of the gun damage can go back up. That's cool. Yeah, and 10% is actually not even really that much. Like, if it does 9% in-game, in-game damage, yeah, 
like it's an, it's a one percent increase. So you know, it, Arbiter is not going to be winning games because of this ten percent. Oh, certainly not. Yeah, it's not. It's not so bad. Uh, self grenade now causes a stagger on grounded characters. This means if you block it as a reversal and Arbiter doesn't have overshield, he'll be punishable because he's still standing. You know, they did a really bad job of demonstrating what they meant by this when they showed <laughs> it off because everybody was like, what? His grenade now staggers. Arbiter is going to be broken. But what they didn't mention is if Arbiter does on a wake up and you block it, he gets staggered and you can He gets staggered. It. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah that's trying to make the important part is that now if he wakes up, if he does, and you block his wake up, if he does grenade, then uh if he does yeah if he does grenade and you block you get a combo if he does yep. shadow overshield and you block you get a combo so he cannot safely wake up anymore right and people are like well if he has overshield and you try to meet him then he gets a combo on you because you stagger and he doesn't because of the shield yeah but that doesn't happen all that much because if you knock him down he doesn't have overshield right no, he doesn't exactly, have yeah. so if you knock him down, he has overshield only because of like instinct, but then he can do wake up parry and all this other stuff, so it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, his character had way too many wake up options. Why does he need like fucking eight wake up options? I don't know. Plus parry. It's like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. But they fixed that. VXX, VFX trails on rushing slash and overhead slash openers have been changed to help see it better. Yeah, it makes it easier to break his juggles a bit. Uh, fix the bug that allowed Arbiter to whiff cancel into Enders. That was crazy. Yeah, you saw that, right? Yes, I that, saw that. That was that insane. Combo video. It was crazy. I saw Ogdi do it in tournament. Oh, really? Yeah, it was oh, absurd. Man, that's sick. I want to see that. Now. It was super cool. Uh, it was off stream at Evo. Fix an issue that allowed Arbiter oh. to use Tack on Carbine to cash out combos without performing an Ender. Fix the bug that prevented him from special canceling his MP, HP, and Heavy Punch. Heavy Punch target combos. Fix the bug that prevented other characters from properly parrying a grenade. Good stuff. Arbiter, definitely weaker this patch. Definitely yeah, no not as strong as he was before. He got dunked. He deserved it. So, Well, yeah. what does it basically mean? It means he can't wake up, and it means that every time he tries the gun loop, it costs him three bullets. Yeah. That's like that's kind of the extent of it, right? Yeah, like his damage is still really great. His mix-up potential has not changed at all. No, he still gets to do uh, grenade after damage ender. His damage ender still does quite a good chunk. Uh, yeah, he is still super powerful vortex mix-up character, but like the other characters who are like that in that game, in the game now has weaker defense, and that now was always weak. the problem, right? Is that Arbiter yep. was these other characters where, like, you have to think, right? Like Spinal, right? Super powerful offense, not great neutral, not great defense. Like that is like the archetype for a vortex character in Ki is what they're looking for, and Arbiter mm -hmm. ended up having better neutral and better defense than a lot of characters but also super powerful vortex so like obviously that needs to be fixed he either needs to have weaker vortex or they need to fix the other things so yeah makes sense he's still probably fine i, st I think, still think he's yeah. one of the stronger characters still i think he's a, i think he's a really strong character it's just that people will have to find new uses for gun or they'll have to commit to using more ammo that's it they'll still do all the the same vortex stuff and they'll still have amazing grounded normals and the character's really good Mira. The KV inflicted by Bloody Seekers has been increased by 20% and deals the full amount even during low KV juggle states. Uh, yeah, this is pretty crazy. She would get those one chance juggles where you just yeah. get like 80 to 90% off of one cash out. Yeah, dude, it was way too good. And I don't think, I mean, some, some Mira players were starting to use it in matches, but man, if that stuff, if this game was played for like two more years, this would be like all you'd ever see with this character. Yeah, I think that this character in the last patch was one of the stronger characters in the game, and most people just probably didn't see it. Because uh, you have the player really, really perfect in a game where if your neutral is even with your opponent's neutral, like skill level wise, then like you're probably going to get dunked. Like you have to be very good uh, to mm -hmm. play this character well. Potential mm -hmm. damage inflicted by instinct vampire mist was decreased by 50%. However, the recoverable health restored by the mist has been increased by 25%. So, what does that mean? You get. 50% less potential damage, right? Although it's mm -hmm. still going to be a lot. Uh, and you get 25% more life back, which means that you get to go much, much, much crazier with how often you're going to be using the heavy and medium attacks, including like the, the floating bats that go, like the heavy punch bats, right? They're yep. so good. Or all her other plus special moves, you get to gain health back better, but you don't inflict as much damage. So it's really a trait of you being able to do cool, powerful moves more but getting less damage when you cash out, which I think is a better, is a good change for her. It's really good because, again, we were talking about like degenerate gameplay with other characters. Right. Vampire Mist doing 50% just means cash, or just means one chance can to juggle into. Yeah, it was, that's all you ever do. That. Nobody wants that. Yeah, if you, want, if you get missed on your opponent, you now get to do like heavy drill and heavy bats. That's a, that's a lot more fun. 
definitely. Uh, increase the amount of recoverable health restored from bite linkers, which is really, really awesome. It's 50% more. I think this is great. Consistently gives you a way to heal back more. Uh, yeah, I think I this is change. a big buff for her. This is really good. Yeah, it is, because 5, uh, it goes from 10 points to 15. 5 yeah. is the cost of an air dash. So every time you do a... Um, a single uh, bite linker, you now can do extra air dashes. Right, which is like you, so good, man. It's you so have a way so to measure good. it, right? It's so good, yeah. But the nice thing is, is that it says in the patch notes here is that it because you have to enter the combo system to do it, it's and you do no damage to your opponent every time you do this, it's a really nice risk-reward balance, and I like that. Yeah, uh, I'm a big fan. I think this is a good thing. And then everything else is bug fixes. Yeah, the, and some big ones. Some of these bug fixes were super serious, actually. Yeah, there was the crazy one where you could uh, use another move before you air dash, and then your air dash would have the physics of it. This is yeah. the bottom one. So this was like the crazy, like you can do like triangle jump air dashes with Mira and like all this fucking psycho shit. Yeah, it was it was so strong. Like uh, yeah, that's yeah, super good. Oh, super and good. This, this medium blood seekers one was even crazier. Like you could. You knock someone down and throw medium blood seekers, and then you could jump cancel before, or you could do moves before the yes. final one came out. And it's just like you're stuck in this like six way mix up. It was super, super funky. Uh, but yeah, people, I see a lot of people saying in the chat stuff like, man, Mira is now good. Uh, I think she was really good last patch. I think she's definitely a strong character. Yeah. I and mean, I think this patch, she is one of the strongest characters in the game. Yeah, I'm with you. I think she was always good. Yeah. Like, always really good very strong people yeah. people didn't do a good enough job of analyzing her risk reward i think like uh command grab has the same recovery as a regular throw so yeah it's so fast you can't you can't jump it and punish it reliably when ticked off normals like that's a huge difference this command grab does basically 30 percent reverse damage and you're just like right it sucks i can't use it it's like are you serious She's it's a crazy. super powerful character i think uh really polarizing though and how her matches can go sometimes but which, I think, is, which is I like, which is what I like. It sort of reminds right. me of Arya, right? Yeah, she's very this weird spot where she's just sometimes she gets just mega dunked, and sometimes she does the dunking, and it's fun to watch and it's fun to play. She's very good. Gargos. Fix the bug causing heavy punch attacks to build less meter than intended. Fix the bug causing these are all changes from last time, right? Uh, yeah, the first four or five four, are yeah up to yeah. the the minion knockdown one. Yeah, stones, uh, stone skin explosion not being a hard knockdown, blah, 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 right? We got all that. Um, yep. If a minion is knocked down, he will not get up while Gargos is in reaction from being hit. So what this means is uh, you start a combo, you hit Gargos and his minions. His minions used to stand up, and sometimes they would hit you or sometimes they would get hit. Right. Uh, which, you know, it could go either way for you. Now they will not stand up until he's done, though, and he gets up. Uh, this was awesome. This is like a buff and a nerf, uh, yeah, which I think, I think a lot it's... of people are not realizing. As someone who plays Gargos, uh, I am pretty happy with this change, actually, for a lot of reasons. But the main one is that now my minions will not get dunked because you're comboing me and happen to hit them from behind or something. Uh, this is really awesome because when you're doing a combo against Gargos, he will, you'll now not get messed up by the minions. That's super awesome for you. But as the Gargos player, it means his minions are less likely to get hit, so you don't lose them either. That's great. Second of all, it means you're pushing Gargos forward as you're doing your combo. When you he stands back up, the minion's going to stand up behind you. <laughs> so you're going to now have my minion behind you. And I'm like, fuck yeah, this is sick. Now you have my minion behind you. And, like, you just fucking, you fell right into my trap card. Like, I'm so happy. My boys are going to stand up, and they're going to come over, and they're going to fuck you up. It's going to be sick. So I'm really yeah. happy about this as a Gargos player. And I think a lot of people don't really think about the nerf uh, from both sides of things. But, yeah, I thought that this was really a good change because minions getting up and randomly getting hit or hitting you felt frustrating. So this is consistent. I like this. Yeah, it's consistently, like you say, good for Gargos, good for his opponent. It's another thing, like, so you do a combo, right? You hit you hit the minion, and you get to keep doing your combo. Yeah. But in neutral, let's say you poke a minion with, like, a jab, and he's yeah. on the ground for, like, two seconds. And then you hit Gargos with overhead. Now you know for sure you get to do your combo. Yes. Right? It's like this like sense of security that I think players who fight against Gargos will really like. Yeah, the sense of like knowing like, all right, I'm good. Yeah, because I, I was talking to some players on Twitter like maybe two weeks ago or something, and they were like, I was asking, what do you not like about Gargos? Yeah. And I was like, well, what happens if you like hit the minion and then you go attack Gargos and you hit him? And he's like, well, it doesn't matter. The minion's going to get up behind me and stab me in the back. Yeah, he sure and was. Now it's, <laughs> he sure was, right? And now it's, it's sort of sick. like... 
Well, now you get to knock the minions down, and your mix-up actually counts, right? So yes. it's really good. Yeah, it's a, it's a great change. Uh, reduce the damage dealt by range auto doubles by forty percent. That's a grip. Reduce the damage on portal punch combo. ender by ten percent. That's a grip. His far range combos really don't do much damage anymore. Right. Uh, so, so his zoning so is even less effective than before. You're just which... supposed to like not be so irritated. I guess it's sort of this like Conra thing where they just right. don't want him to be doing so much damage from afar. Yeah, it wasn't even a ton, but it makes sense. Because uh, yeah. people are having trouble dealing with the zoning because they've never played an NRS game because the zoning is just like dealing with NRS zoning. It's really not that different. Mm -hmm. uh, reduce the travel distance of the air light crusher to reduce players' ability to run away with it. It makes a lot of sense. Also, reduce the jump height of forward and backwards double jumps by 20%, so he can't get as high on the screen while he runs away or just be as frustrating. Uh, that plus air light crusher makes him much weaker at running away from a lot of characters. Uh, which yeah. I think is what they wanted. He's much less frustrating. And the main character that benefits from this, I think, is Ram. Because yeah. he could not he could not stop Gargoyle. That shit was fucking it. hard, dude. That shit was hard. Was... I was telling Lord Kites. And Kites was like, nah, man. And I was like, you sure? And he's like, yeah, we should probably give him something right. I was like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Fix the bug, causing the ender version of his inner drop to cause a hard knockdown. Uh, yeah, this is weird. Uh, it means that if you want minions, for sure, you got to do the hard knockdown ender, which is just, you know, command and throw in a forward and you just throw them down. Yeah, hard knockdown ender off of command grab, or you just do launcher ender, either one. Yeah, fix the bug that allowed Gargos to perform auto doubles, linkers, and enders against opponents with no vulnerable hitboxes if he has activated instinct right after setting someone down from a command. Yo, have that you seen super this? Funny. No. Have you seen this tech? People have posted text. So basically, they do a command grab and they set him down. And then the instinct, as soon as Gargos finishes that. But his yeah. opponent's in this weird state, so he can do, like, swoop, and he goes through the hitbox. And then he what can, the like, attack fuck? with, like, overhead low on the other side. Really, It's really fast and surprising. What the fuck? That sounds sick. Why didn't I know about this? Yeah, I don't know. I saw, like, a tech video. It was, like, a five-minute thing. He's like, here's all the setups you can do off this. God yeah. damn it. That sounds so fucking <laughs> sick. How come I never know the cool Gargos stuff? All I do is fucking summon minions and have sick fucking anti-airs, and that's how I play Gargos. Nah, man, you missed the boat on this one. You're going to have to Fuck. Ah, Gargos is so fun. I actually think after this patch, uh, he'll be a good amount weaker, uh, which is probably the intention, and he'll probably be less frustrating to fight, which is the main intention, right? Like, this character yeah. should not be super strong because he's frustrating. So you don't want him to be super good. It's very Conra like uh, It's very Conra like It's also really interesting because unlike Conra in Season 2, I think people are a little torn on whether this character was actually really good or really not. Right, we all clearly knew Conra was fucking ridiculous. Yeah, we all knew that. And then this character's like, well, he's good, but, I mean, he's not that good, but he's good. And it's sort of this like weird... He seems good, but, like, some people don't think he's good, and some people think he's bad, and, like, who knows. But whatever. So it, all I know is that... I'm going to still summon minions and anti air with Crusher and fucking be a jerk. Yeah, dude, that's that's the game plan. It's gonna, yeah, I just these, play this character to troll people online, and it's sick, so that's what I'm about. These homies are going to come in and save you from the back more That shit oh. is sick. I'm so happy about that. General Ram. Inputs for Ultra and Stage Ultra have swapped. Yes. This is such a good change. Man, yes. it was so frustrating before when you tried to Ultra and got Krill Shield. That sucked. Man, I don't think... If you haven't played Ram, you don't know how frustrating this, this is. This shit sucks. It was the this worst. Man, so I played Ram a lot, and this is a super frustrating thing. I'm really happy about this. Shadow yeah, Crow Rush moves 50% faster across the screen, and it's immune to projectiles. This is huge. Yeah, it's the move actually wasn't... Old Shadow Crow Rush wasn't really that fast. So this is... It's going to be faster, but it's not going to be like unstoppably fast. No, definitely not. Uh, but it being projectile invincible is sick. That's really good. If yeah, you make a raid, you're getting in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any successful Krill Rush, Ram is now immune to projectiles for the duration of the stab animation. Yeah, this was some frustrating stuff where, like, hail would hit you. Yeah, hail would hit you. Like a minion that. would hit you. A minion uh, would hit you. There are some frustrating scenarios you. that were really annoying. Decrease the potential damage buildup during instinct mode by 12%. Yeah, you don't want him hitting you for 80% always. Maybe 70% sometimes fine. 70% and now that he gets in, it's like, yeah. You don't want yeah, to he's him. still going to be buff. Fix the bug causing Krill Shield to think that certain projectile types spawn from normal attacks, such as Idle Mage Heavy Punch, where melee hits, which remove Krill Shield. It's right. pretty important. Fix the bug causing Light Emergence to not have any lower body invulnerability, as it was advertised to have. It still doesn't have lower body invulnerability on startup, but does for all of its active run. That's funny that it just never did. And they were yeah, like, it never yeah, it did. Does. We were looking at the, the hitboxes in training, and it was like... Uh, is this supposed to be low invincible or what? It's yeah, like, like how does this work? <laughs> it's like, am I missing something or what's going on here? Come on, Key. It's 33%. We trusted you. Fix yeah, the exactly. bug that allowed Ram to cancel his dominant stomps into normals. Oh, did you see things. this tech? No, what the fuck is... This how is, am I missing all this? 
Well, this is really hard to do, but it would happen to me in training mode. And uh, basically, if you do command grab, yeah. like you wait until the animation's finished and then you stomp. Right. But if you press stomp on a certain frame, he would immediately stomp. Oh, I, I definitely do that on purpose a lot. And it's like you can't break it because you're not expecting there to be any breakable. Oh, that's unbreakable? There. Or is it no, just I mean, like people don't You can break, break it, but no one's going to be mashing break. Oh, because I do this all the time. Like when I command throw, I just mash the stomp and it comes out instantly. Sometimes it comes out like during the, the command throw animation. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, I, see... I was doing this unintentionally, just thinking that the animation had ended. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've seen the, what's it called? I've seen the, uh, Coach Steve do this in like real matches. He would like, yeah, me sometimes too. I was delay doing it. Sometimes he would do it like early and it's, you can't break it. It's really frustrating. That is sick. I'm happy so, now about this. Uh, I'm happy that it's fixed. <laughs> yeah. Idle. Well, all right. Oh, so let's talk about Ram. Let's just say what we think about him overall. Um, yeah. So this character, people are like, Man, I don't think he's that good. But if he gets, if he can get past zoning, I mean, he's gonna be terrifying. This I, I think you better him. watch out. Yeah, this character is like, if he can get through zoning on reaction, and he's in projectile invincible during the stab, so you can't like, oh, I don't know, man. I think he's gonna be a terror when he gets close to you. He's gonna be a buff character. I think that he's definitely much better and probably closer to where he should be. Uh, this patch, I'm pretty happy. I think that people underestimate how good he is. Anyway, man, his footsies are fucking crazy. I was like whiff punishing like Jago low medium kick from like half screen with fierce i'm like yep fierce yeah for fierce. sure i mean this character's like, it's so absurdly ridiculous. fast it's like oh my god his, his grounded normals are so insane and uh, you press like a heavy stab and then you're in there at like minus one and you just shadow command grab and it's like, yeah well, and you're just what like you what are you gonna do about it jump okay yeah crouching like, fierce like emergence it's crazy anyway uh yeah i think he's better than people give him credit for i think uh but this patch will certainly be a terror It'll be better, and I think he might still have a couple bad matchups, like maybe Fulgore will be tough still. Um, but I think, yeah, I think he needs a couple bad matchups or else he might run away. <laughs> His fucking idol changes. All right, well, Yo. get ready. It's about to get serious. Yeah. Warrior Jumping HP uh, has a new new animation. Yeah, where are we at here? There's like 25 uh, changes that were in the old patch. Where are we at? Yeah, I don't even know. It's probably uh, is is it right where warrior standing medium punch is now plus one on block instead of plus two? Or is that uh, I think the, I think the one above it is new too. Um, yeah, it's the made adjustments to the changes. That's the the first one. Yeah. Okay. Made adjustments to the changes to switch heads in each modes. You'll switch a bit more now. I think is what it's the intention. Yeah, and later on in the patch notes, they say something about medium and heavy normals also caused head switch. Yeah, so the the design is that the character will switch now more often than before because before you kind of just stay in whatever stance you want. I don't yeah, think that's could, the intention. You could stay in, like, to zone ram out. You would just go into mage and go full screen and press back medium punch. And the guy's like, well, yeah. time to set my controller down. And uh, if you wanted to stay in the warrior body, it wasn't really that hard either. No, so. you could just do it. Uh, warrior crouching medium punch, which is a six-frame button, was plus four on block. Can you imagine? <laughs> this thing was crazy good. Yeah, it was insane. But they made it plus one now. Jumping heavy only, punch. Only plus one. animation. Yeah, it's still ridiculous, but. Jumping at yeah. a bunch of new animation to make it cover much less space and starts up two frames slower, uh, which is awesome. Definitely jump fucking heavy punch. Clearly the dominant strategy. If you had half a brain cell, yeah. you'd be like, yep, jumping heavy punch. and just. So I played everything. a lot of fighting games, like many, many dozens. I think yeah. jump heavy punch with idle might be the best jumping normal I have ever seen. It's up there for sure. I can't it's think like, of many jumping normals that were much better. Uh, I can't really. Uh, it's so unbelievably good. like I, this, I fought against like release superman and injustice you know mm -hmm. i fought against some of these characters that were just pretty absurd uh and like yeah release idol is something this character is pretty <laughs> absurd he is very very strong and jumping heavy punch one of the most annoying things to fight ever it, it reminds yeah. me of playing mkx in the beginning when everybody's neutral jump punch was just yeah, so kung jin. silly yeah kung jin you're just like yeah. neutral jump punch on the way up to be any counter poke and then land and then like hit buttons and it's like okay nothing you can do about that there's no shadow counter to get out of there no and like yeah you have to back dash and then you lose your stamina you get hit you can't combo break that shit sucks so yeah uh that's jumping heavy punch uh 10 frames more recovery was added to telestrike we want to give players a bit more time to punish this move on whiff or block yeah make it a bit easier that's to punish. Fair. it's it's tough because it was really fast and it crosses you up so it's like it's a frustrating combination of things yeah, you're often not ready to punish it when it happens, and it's like, it's it's utility and neutral still exists. So yeah, it's fine to be a little bit more negative. Yeah, I do. Not only was I playing against pre-patched Superman, you guys have no idea. I lived in Southern California and played with the two 
best Superman players every week. They both made top eight at Evo and then came back and was like, yep, let's play some Superman versus whatever character. And I'm like, no, you can go fuck yourself. I'm not playing against your stupid character. <laughs> anyway, light and medium bolt strikes are minus 12 on block from minus nine, which just makes the zoning a bit worse. It means that you can get in a bit better and also probably punish at some ranges before uh, characters have more options to deal with it. Yeah, I think like maybe Shadow Wind Kick, which maybe has like, or, you know, a move that's like 10 frames to start up might reach it now. That right. sort of thing. Uh, yeah, definitely a good change. Uh, throw damage reduced by 20%. Uh, he has a great War throw range anyway, so... Yeah, throw fine. damage, like, Warriors, or Idol's Warrior throw was, like, freaking 12% or something. It's so far, too. It's like, what the fuck? It's far, high damage. You can't get out of the way of it. Yeah, so... It's so tough to deal with. Back plus medium punch blast. Com uh, Command Normal has six additional frames to start up. Uh, this is Mage Dance. Uh, back medium punch, energy blast, Command Normal is no longer cancelable into special moves. This, um, this is a big one. This is huge, yeah. Because before yeah. it was like really good for him to cancel in a Meteor or Lightning for a mix-up. Uh, and now he can't really do it as much. Or you cancel him Teleport, right, and do different stuff. But yeah, now this is definitely a big one. It's, it's meant for more of a zoning tool. Yeah, he's basically trying to lock you in place with this button. He can't just be like, all right, now you block this full screen normal. Now you also get to hold this mix-up. Right. So, um, that's great. For Medium Punch, this is the overhead in Warrior Stance. Yep. Uh, is now five frames slower on startup, uh, and is also minus four on block from minus one, which is Can fucking you believe crazy. that move was minus one? I don't know how that happened. Things are crazy. Uh, also, no longer lower body. It was horrible. a low crush. So it, <laughs> it was, was a low crushing a low crush. minus one overhead that could recapture and had a huge hitbox. So it used to be, I think, 23 frames to start up, so five extra frames is 28, which makes it about the same startup as Shatter. So if you're getting hit by Shatter, you're probably going to get hit by this. You know, certainly a good move yeah it's a good move it'll recapture you if you jump randomly uh if he does it at max range minus four is nothing you're not going to ever get punished. no yeah you won't be able to punish that most and he gets the press like a uh, freaking crouch strong which is like super far range and six plus frames one. plus one yeah gonna, okay yeah, he's in there uh medium crushing swing launches enemies slightly higher to accommodate slower recapture overhead uh, that means he's probably gonna get some cool juggles off of it reduce the distance that idle bounces away after using mage, jumping, medium punch, and jumping heavy punch, which is really strong for zoning and just escaping pressure. Yeah. Uh, meteor enders are now plus on hit instead of being punishable. That's hilarious. Enders being punishable <laughs> always sucks. Yeah, that's a bummer. Additional KV is now added when performing level 1, 2, or 3 crushing destroyer enders. Which uh, was so the launcher ender. Yeah, the launcher ender. So you can't just loop you with, you know, recapture. Yeah, I used ender. to do level 1 ender, then recapture, then do it again, then recapture. Yeah, that was annoying. Yeah. Uh, and then a bunch of bug fixes. Bug that causes Bolt Strike to somehow to sometimes only hit once, leading to long damaging, unbreakable juggles. Obviously, you don't want that. Fix the bug causing Medium Stomp Strike to have longer recovery than intended, screwing up its advantage on hit or block. It is now plus eight on hit, plus two on block, as originally intended. That's instinct, right? No, Stomp Strike is the Mage uh, Axe Kick special. Is it? I'm pretty sure. Okay, interesting. I think this is just a mage fix, not an instinct fix. Okay, I thought sure. it was. I thought it was instinct uh, fix. Fix the bug preventing the use of medium and heavy normals from attempting to switch heads. Oh, okay. So yeah, this is the one you're talking about. So now medium and heavy normals yeah. will trigger the same uh, RNG that could switch your head. Right. This is huge. This is really big. So this... if you're like full screen with mage and you're swinging with back medium punch, now you might switch. Yeah, and, and if you're up would... close hitting those super strong normals, like can you imagine you just hit forward medium punch? as warrior and then suddenly you're point blank and switch right yeah exactly. like, oh fuck uh this is a big 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 change for idol this is a big big nerf i think uh, what it basically means is that he has to be willing to, to play with both bodies in all situations yes instead Which of just is, i think with the original design right yeah that's probably what he was supposed to do but he ended up not switching as much probably as they wanted yeah so instead you're just like you pick the the body that suits your matchup, and then you just never leave it. So, I like it. Yes, fix a bug causing level one, three, and four versions of crushing shoulder ender, which is the wall splat to have less advantage after the wall splat than intended. A sweep should be possible to combo after all versions. Now, okay, yeah, so just a, a bit more frame advantage. Makes um, sense. He was having a bug where it wasn't happening. Fix a bug that allowed idle to cancel an instinct when landing from a crushing swing on hit or block. Oh, that's the overhead, yeah. So he probably shouldn't have been able to do that. Command uh, crushing swing is the DP. Is it? Yeah. So he would like do DP and then he would like confirm if it hit and on block he would land. Oh, land and then in sync. Okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I've seen that. 
That's Fix the bug cool. preventing enders from cashing out when opening with back plus medium punch blast. I've had that happen to me. Yeah. Uh, that's funky. That's the mage back medium punch. But Fix it might not even matter because now you can't special cancel. Special cancel it, right? Oh, yeah. I don't even but know. But I think it's, I mean, maybe some random situation will happen where it If leads. you back medium punch and then switch stances now, and then you can run up. Right, yeah, something like that. Or instant cancel it, something like that. Fix the bug causing the stomp strike rage follow up to occur even without charges available. Uh, yeah, just a bug with the resource system he had. Size of the VFX trails on Crushing Destroyer opener have been changed to help the opponent see what strength is used. This happened with a bunch of characters, right? Where their juggles are yeah. supposed to have trails on them. Where it's one, two, or three, depending on the strength. And you can see which it is and break easier. So they're just adding that into a few characters. Yeah, the characters that rely or can like loop these weird juggles, it's like, yeah, we need to make sure that this is reaction breakable by some people. Yeah, definitely. Uh, fixed a bug causing the heavy crushing swing to not follow up with the second hit if the first one was a counter hit. That's funky. Uh, video yeah, games, man. Stuff like that. Yeah, totally. Fixing fix a bug that causes bolt strike projectiles to stay active even when the opponent performed a counter breaker. That's super funky too. Projectiles are supposed to disappear when counter breakers occur. So yeah. Yeah. Fix the bug preventing shadow crushing destroyers ground bounds versus airborne opponents from working. I definitely have seen that a bunch. Mm -hmm. Fix the bug causing the recovery from uh, run to turn and face the opponent inappropriately. They did this with Spinal as well, where he would randomly switch sides and he would try to do normals and it would just go the wrong way. Right. Uh, fix the bug that could cause a recapture hit on heavy crushing swing to auto correct and face the other direction. I've definitely seen that too. Uh, it's when it hits like near above his head, is when I've seen it. Uh, mm -hmm. Fix the bug causing wake up, which is where he punches himself in the face to switch. To come yep. out on down back plus heavy punch. Thank God, that was such an annoying thing to have happen. It will only come out with back plus heavy punch now. Yeah, and Austin, I had it when I would try to instinct. I would try to hit instinct with back plus heavy punch and heavy kick and get it or down. Yeah, back. I've definitely seen people just like punch themselves out of a crouching position randomly. It's and you're just like, like Ugh. yeah, it doesn't doesn't work. Fix the bug that allowed Idle to delay round transitions by punching himself in the face. They don't even use the name of the move. They just say punching himself in the face. I love that. They used it in the previous sentence, but they're like, nah, no. Right. What he does they is punch himself. It. They're like, it's fucking punching yourself in the face. You guys know. Fix the bug that could cause lock-ups uh, if the stomp strike ender connected with a projectile. Uh, I wanted to say one thing about the delay round transitions thing. Yeah. So what that actually means is that you know when you're in, in between rounds, you can punch yourself in the face during instinct to yes. like keep your instinct going? You can still do that. What Actually, this happened was there was a way for you to like actually permanently prolong the round from starting. Uh -huh. So you could like 99 seconds later still be punching yourself without having anything happen. Yeah, super frustrating. So yeah, they just wanted to make sure that you can still punch yourself in the face to keep your instinct up, but you just can't delay the round transition. Yeah, it's like, it's not one of those things that you'd likely see in tournament that often, but is a good fit. Yeah, I think it's like one or two frame window where it would just like kill the timer for a second or something. Yeah. Uh, fix the bug that could that caused mage modes projectiles to push him away from cornered opponents unexpectedly. Fix the bug that caused bolts and meteors to push idle back against a cornered opponent on block. Sounds like the same kind of fix. Fix the bug yep. that caused level two and level three bulk strike enders to whiff for maximum range. I've definitely seen that bug too. And that's it for idle. He has a fuck ton of changes. Yeah, and a ton of ton of this is bug fixes, but a lot of it is balance a lot of balance concentrated into just a couple points yeah which i think are you know like the jumping heavy punch and the overhead and the back medium punch and mage yeah making the mage a bit less like and you know you, you don't get as much pushback when you do the air jet packs yeah uh to move yourself away and, and switching happens more often right and switching stuff so the core of the character is still here uh, or so the character still here, yeah. I think if you go into this expecting Idol to be much worse, you'll be wrong. I think that he will certainly be one of the better characters still. I, I'm with you. I think he's... I mean, we don't really know how... I mean, we knew he was silly in the previous patch. Right. But we're not sure what his intention... Like, where he would have ended up if he was intended. I think he's yeah. going to be really good. Yeah, I think so too. Like, he's got... Think of all the stuff he still has, right? He's still got run cancels in Warrior. He's still got, like unbreakable pip zoning yes he's still very powerful age like you can't mess with this character yeah the thing is a character career. that like will do zoning with mage and then switch to another stance and be like well good thing i'm the best rushdown character still and then just run right. in and fucking dunk you so it's like you, you don't this character is still very good i think yeah definitely and in like instinct his dp is like virtually unpunishable it's Jeez. so hard to punish yeah still even after the change it's like even even after the change you're you need like amazing reactions to punish it. I don't know. I think this character, if there's if there's idle players who are sad that this change is just destroying their character, I think they should. They probably won't feel the same way in a month. 
I think yeah, I think they'll be fine. Will be good. Yeah. Well, I think they need to hang in there. So overall, uh, patch thoughts. Patch thoughts. I think okay. I think ninety five percent of the stuff they did is super awesome. You know what I mean? I think yes. they really nailed a ton of things that the community really didn't like. Um, and these were things that we knew about, like, say, two months ago, but also things that have come up recently. Like, I think they had good foresight to patch ahead of what some of the community had found out. Yes. And I think it's just, like, I think they really nailed it. Even if they didn't get every character to perfectly where they need to be, I think you can't be upset about this patch. Right. Uh, I think I'm pretty happy with it, too, to be honest. Uh, when I originally read the patch notes, because the stream was useless to me, I was pretty happy with what I saw. I was like, this looks pretty good. Uh, it was a lot to get through. And it's really hard to conceptualize the game from like the perspective of, like, you have to think of all the changes to all the characters and how it's going to shake up. It's really tough, I think. Yeah, you you know, you think, oh, Saber Wolf did get any changes, but then you think, well, Gargos got worse with the zoning, and Idol's a little worse, and I also struggle with the yeah. Thunder matchup, and he's worse now, he's worse, so maybe right. my character actually is better. You know, It's kind of hard to tell just by reading a page. Uh, it's super hard to say. Uh, I think I, I think most people right now from reading it are pretty happy with the patch notes in general. Uh, we'll see how they feel in like a month once you know things settle down. We also will see how they feel once they start losing and they forget what logic is. and blame that, the game. that will take a lot less time than a month, let me tell you. Yeah, someone will lose tomorrow to a character that they're like, I thought this character was nerfed. Oh, he must not be nerfed. I lost. But... Uh, I think I'm pretty happy with the changes. I'm really curious to see what competitive Killer Instinct looks like now. I can't wait to mess around with a lot of the new characters. Ram, uh, Gargos, especially. Those are the two characters I'm super interested in. Mira and Rash, who I've been playing a lot. Those characters are going to be sick this patch. They're going to be really buff, I think. Ra my my predictions for real strong characters this patch is going to be Arya. Super powerful, super strong. Bug aside, if she didn't have the bug especially. Yeah. Super powerful, strong character, Rash, Arya, uh, Jago, and Fulgore are still good. So those, those are my and, predictions. from. Strong and Omen's character. up there for me. And Omen, yeah. Omen's super good, too. Uh, Thompson in the chat saying, at least I get to hear some positivity about the notes from one stream. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of streams that you can watch Killer Instinct on on Twitch. Uh, but those guys, they're, they're a bunch of stinkers a lot of times. They, they don't have good attitudes. So... We are here just to speak about the game from a logical perspective. Uh, just try to be as neutral as possible about the changes here and there. Uh, and it's not like we read the patch notes and we're like, all oh, these changes are the best thing ever. Like We, do, we did uh. mention there's characters we feel like should have got maybe a little bit more or we think the buffs are super strong on some character. But uh, like I think Kim got a lot. And I think that Spinal could have used something else. Uh, just off the right. top of my head. But we'll but see it, how the patch shakes up, right? They have said in the patch notes and multiple times that this is not the last time they're patching so if there's anything that needs to be touched or addressed or if there's bugs then let people know yeah i think the cool thing is that yeah exactly like you think maybe sadira needs a bit more damage but at the same time she got these crazy creative new combos right so you're like do we want to give her both damage and creativity in the same patch maybe maybe not you know yeah see how maybe. the creativity goes and where it leads first yeah. right and if it's like okay it's not quite enough what she needs and in a future patch we'll touch her damage a bit or if it's enough then it's like great we didn't we didn't over buffer everything's all right and yeah i think i think people will take like a couple days and they'll be like all right this patch is doing some good things and then they'll completely forget about everything that they hated in the previous patch and then they'll just find a couple new characters to latch onto to hate yep i think you're right i think people will be like well now that this patch is all said and done x character is broken and i hate them and keats uh, I'm coming to your house tomorrow. I'm yeah, don't you guys you. listen to the community? What's going on? Yeah. thought you guys were supposed that to pay attention. That is crazy to me. The best part, ugh. Remember when Keats was like, you know, I think Gargos is uh, not as strong as some of the other characters in the game. And then he nerfed him right after. And everybody's like, you don't listen to us. We wanted him nerfed. And you guys nerfed him. Why would you not listen to us? And I'm like, And now this patch even more nerfs. You're right. It's like he nerfs Gargos, which is what everybody wants. Even though he doesn't think the character needs nerfs, he nerfs them because everybody wants nerfs. And you're like, man, this motherfucker won't listen to me. He's a big <laughs> jerk. And it's like, what I don't do we know gotta what you do? Want. What do we gotta do to get him to listen to the community? Man, it well, wasn't that thirty three percent spin speed though, was it? <laughs> Jeez. That was the funniest thing I've ever read. That was the funniest thing I've ever read in I, chat. I am so because sad I, I started that. to type back. I was like 
you guys are just and then i just deleted it and i was like yeah i've had oh man it's so tough <laughs> like i just Sometimes had to stop myself just hold it like for context in case you missed it earlier we were talking about the full gore spin speed change and uh when they showed it on stream earlier today they said yeah now when you teleport with full gore uh is it slows down 33 percent more when he teleports and people in the chat were saying that doesn't look like 33 percent to me i don't believe it it's not a nerf keats fucking sucks and i'm just like how do you know with your naked eye that that is not 33% slower? 33% sounds like a lot. But when you think about it, like, in the concept of the game, like you mentioned earlier, right? If Arbiter's bullets do 10% more damage, you're thinking, man, that's a lot of damage. But if the bullet does 9%, then it now does 10%. Yeah, it's 1% increase. That's a 1% Whatever. increase. That's nothing. Yeah, uh, who cares? So, yeah. Um... Uh... I looked no, at the frames, man, and it's actually only 30% slower instead of 33%. Can yeah, you... he slowed he slowed down the trailer, the video. He took it into... Took all the frame data and yeah. fucking Jesus. Man, I couldn't believe the shit I was reading in the chat. I'm like, I'm like, why are you here? You clearly hate this game or something. And like, why would you spend time watching this fucking stream? <laughs> like, you're not here for anything else. Man, it doesn't make any sense. It's a but lot of people like that. It kind of goes to show that, like, that's where they sort of see the developers, right? They're like, thinking, actually, the developers would lie to us rather than <laughs> tell us the truth. Like, what? Why? It's such an absurd thing to think. I don't know why. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> why man, do you think the developers guys. would lie to us? They want us to play this game. <laughs> they don't want to yeah. lie to us. Jeez, man. Keats is flat out lying. He's like, man, I only fucking lowered it 20%. These nerds are going to think it's 33. What a bunch of fucking idiots. <laughs> I got them good. Yeah, internally, he's just like, I'm going to make, I'm going to talk about this patch. I'm going to change this character in completely unrelated ways and see how long these idiots take to figure it out. Oh, man. So, yeah, right. And if it like, if it turns out that it's less than 33%, which first of all would actually be hilarious. Yeah, we would be, yeah. I would be so fucking funny <laughs> if it was. But if it's not 33%, you know he's going to increase it to actually be 33%. Oh, totally. There's like, no you know doubt. it's supposed to be 33% less. He might make it like 40% and say, see if you guys can yeah, figure like, it out. Yeah, like, fuck you guys. We decided that we wanted it to be more. <laughs> what a bunch oh, of man. fucking yokels. Anyway, <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. If you want to follow in filament you can go to ki.info.net which uh let me get rid of my face real quick which sucks to do you can see the link right here ki.info.net let me paste this bitch into the fucking what is this called chatterino the chatterino the chatteroony in filament on twitter i'm gonna plug you because i'm good at this all right in filament I... on twitter go follow him there if you know like where to my follow guide, me thank you for reading it's a lot of work yeah, I check out the guide. You can follow me over at twitter.com slash President Obama. I'll post yep. that in the link. The Dalai Lama. The Dalai. Dude. All right, let me tell you guys stream real quick before we go. My favorite thing to do is to read the Dalai Lama's Twitter. Can we close this out by reading the Dalai Lama's Twitter? I think Hold that's on. the perfect way to do it. All right, let's check out the Dalai Lama's most recent tweet. He's the 14th Dalai Lama, by the way, for those of you guys who are curious. Hey, Steve, uh, Steve knows more about the Dalai Lama than any person ought to Dude, I, so I took this Asian histories class uh because you know i date anyway so i, I took <laughs> yeah, this yeah, asian yeah. histories class uh dude i have to tell you guys a funny story about taste steve too I, I took this asian history class and they were asking us questions about the dalai lama and like i knew hella i was like oh yeah the current dalai lama is you know his holiness is the 14th dalai lama and like you know he does this and like his main piece keeping initiative is this and blah, blah, blah. They're like how the fuck do you know this much about the dalai lama i was like i follow him on twitter <laughs> yo twitter Shout out to i twitter. Don't follow the dalai lama on twitter he's like one of the only people i follow on twitter who's like not an fgc person so anyway let's look at the most recent dalai lama too. let's check this out the quality of every human activity ultimately depends on our motivation what does that even mean that's a bunch of bullshit like Steve, it's totally can you not tell true me? Can you tell me what that means? Break it down for me. <laughs> okay, so the quality of every human activity ultimately depends on our motivation. So let's let's take this into context. If you believe that Iron Galaxy is purposely <laughs> oh, sabotaging Killer Instinct, then as you go into the stream where they go over to patch notes, you will have the human activity of feeling like they're fucking up the game. So this is currently correct. Dalai Lama, thank you so much for your insightful wisdom. As always, so topical. so topical, so incredibly impressive. About. I mean, look at this fool. Would he lie to you, Jesus Christ? Man, look at that. <laughs> He's staring right into your soul. Oh, uh, I feel like I just gained him followers right now. Like, I feel like if I look at his most recent followers, I'm gonna see like, look at these fools. 
Fucking grief just followed. <laughs> oh man, you guys, everybody in the chat needs to follow the dog. I hella fucking got you guys. Look at all these people. Follows you, follows you, follows you, follows you. These people are hella watching the stream. I just fucking got you guys to follow the Dalai Lama. Let's fucking go. Oh, I'm so sick. <laughs> it's so good, man. I, ever since I started talking to Sejan more, the Dalai Lama has been a staple on my Twitter feed. I hella got you to follow the, His Holiness, dude. Oh, his Holiness, God. the 14th. If I refresh, Lama. probably more, right? Oh, look at all you guys. I know you guys fucking follow, followed him because of me because it says follows you. Yeah. Like, what are the you... chances some random guy following the doll? See, I got grief so good. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway. We got um, Tasty Steve. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's hear this. So he told me the story, right? He posted a picture on Facebook that had me tagged in it. And Tasty Steve says to me, he's like, you know, I always knew you dated a lot of Asian girls. But I never realized <laughs> until I posted a picture and tagged you in it on Facebook and like 40 Naguians and Tamagotchis came in <laughs> and liked my Facebook photo Naguians. because I had you in it. <laughs> and he's like, and I looked and all of them said one mutual friend and it was Steven Dalai Lama line. They were like, I fucking knew it, dude. And I was fucking dying. It was the funniest shit ever. I was like, Steve, my bad, dude. I didn't fucking realize oh. <laughs> that I had the fucking all the Asian girls rolling in. <laughs> All the Naguyans and the Tamagotchis. <laughs> that shit was sick. Look at this full hell of falls. A... <laughs> Dalai Lama for season four. Yo, can we get Dalai Lama Yo. to balance? All right, hold on. We're going to hit another Dalai Lama quote. Are you ready? I'm going to scroll randomly. And when we hit it, I'm just going to pick a Dalai Lama quote. And that'll close out the stream. Here we go. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Great changes start with individuals. The basis of world peace is inner peace in the hearts of individuals, something we can all work for. There we go. So his holiness is spoken. It starts with you. I'm looking at the man in the mirror, and I'm asking him to change his ways. Michael Jackson said it. Dalai Lama said it. Now you guys know it's from me. It's been a pleasure talking to you guys about some KI. That's going to wrap it up for the stream. I'll see you guys later. And Phil and I talked about the video game, and we're out of here. Peace. See you later, guys.